Good evening, and welcome back to another episode of Once Upon a Witch Light. We would really appreciate it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and chip the bell. I'm gonna redo it. <laughs> I'm gonna redo it. I'm gonna redo it. You're allowed to do that. Andy. I'm gonna redo it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Damn it! I was gonna drink the entire time. <laughs> you can still. Is it because he said chipped the bell? Yes, I yeah. messed up. Yeah. The, the good but it news. doesn't help that there's probably bubbling the whole time yeah. I'm talking. Because after 90 days, the only people that can see this are the patrons. So. Oh, they'll enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it's one they can take home. Yeah. Share with the kids someday. A little peek in the vault. Yeah. Put that in the bank. You know, as I say. Okay, here we go. Mm. <clears throat> good evening. And welcome to another episode of Once Upon a Witch Light. As always, we would greatly appreciate it if you would like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check the bell so you never miss an episode. And of course, we're going to immediately get to the reading of the comments from episode 29. Quote, Gideon, after hearing someone call him a bitch, so you have chosen death. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, you can cut that, right? Rich, flat-faced as always. Yep, I always do. Gets me every time. <laughs> Listening to Gricko tell Torbeck that home is where your best people are got me so sad. But I also half expected Mikey to make a Vin Diesel family joke. <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> and my personal favorite, my personal favorite, they spent two hours deciding if the color of your eyes is too steep a price and it turned out to be nothing. If that ain't the most D&D &D that ever D&D &D <laughs> Is it nothing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll find out. Bunch so, of freaky dudes. in the meantime, please leave a comment. <laughs> Maybe you'll be included next time. Be sure to check out our Patreon and our merch store with all of the new merch that we have in the links below. Thank you. <laughs> Bridge, roll that beautiful bean footage. Oh, I'm not oh, up. Oh, 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 Andy got to start over. That's right. Can yeah. I get him again? Yes. Andy yeah. got to start over. You don't have to say yeah. it with such intent. Yeah. 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 Once upon a witch light hour, the sleeping queen stood in her tower, and through grand halls past lock and key, came to her slumber dreams of three. The first brought laughter filled with fright, the second love defiled by spite. The third, a world of pure delight. She welcomed these, they were her own, but soon from porcelain lips a groan, her silvery dreamscape now forsaken, to pain from which she'd not awaken. Something blighted had come hither, foul as nightshade creeping thither, from yon the grave-like curse did wither. The little prince wept in his spire, his wounded heart had one desire, a ballad from the dreaming queen could turn his maelstrom mind serene. He vowed her rescue, speech sincere, but toys would be his shield and spear, and so he scoured for one full year. In springtime wreathed in parenthood, the prince first found a toy of wood, a doll set, beasts and wild things, but listen close and each one sings. A song of child, owl, and bear, a song that calls the spirits there. A song for monsters with much hair. When summer heat steamed like a kettle, the prince then found a toy of metal, a rocking horse with ashen mane. Around its neck was draped a chain. Its horn and eyes and nose shoot flame with mighty hooves and sturdy frame. No better steed one could proclaim. He searched from autumn's harvest throne. The prince then found a toy of bone. Lettered blocks stacked to the sky, when turned to words could only lie. Deceit known to the hounds of hell makes for a potent hex or spell of souls, of sin, of shadow fell. Through winter's chill from peak to pass, the prince then found a toy of glass. Marble spun in measured motion, like careful thought or certain notion, each glinting cat's eye seeing all, from stars beyond the cosmic sprawl, to inner strength and mind's recall. When season stopped, the final day, at last the prince found halves of clay. He shed a tear, this would not do, his favorite toy was split in two. It stank and had a horrid face, but in his heart held special place, through toil this crack he would erase. 
The day has come, no time for rest. The fateful toys placed in a chest with stripes of white and stripes of red, just like a big top by his bed. The little prince prepares a flower for either outcome, sweet or sour, and makes a wish for love, for power, once upon a witchlight hour. Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> here, I swear. Last time on Once Upon a Witch Life, we saw a boots guy and had something to do with Yon, and there were also thunder people. Oh, what man. the fuck is a boots guy? What, what the boots, uh, guy? boots guy? The bulge guy. Oh, bulge. Oh, bulge guy. <laughs> the bulge the boots did I miss bulge an episode? Boots and bulge and boots. <laughs> bulge and boots. All we know about him is he wears boots. Bulge and boots and bulge and boots. And he's a huge bulge. And he's pretty freaky. That was one of my favorite moments. Oh, Boots bulge guy. Far yeah. Oh shit! I wish I could do a David Bowie impression. Well, if saying, I could. Hey, you bunch of freaky. They idiots. call me Mister Bulge. <laughs> you can do anything you set your mind your to, Nikki. Yeah. I, I don't know what David Bowie sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> Please do. That's your David Bowie. That's your David Bowie. David Bowie sounds like an awful one. Yeah. <laughs> what the yeah. fuck, Derek? It's also his <laughs> Professor Clayton Azran impression too. Mister Bulge. You are so pretty groovy, dude. I'm just talking <laughs> Robin Gray. Oh. Uh, <sighs> you now are in my Moon Age daydream. We all get fucking teleported. <laughs> he doesn't say that. I riot. I quit. Space oh, is pretty. Space freaky. is pretty. Fr- the Feywild is a pretty freaky place. Um. Oh, Mister Bulge, that's who. You are. <laughs> no. I think yes, that's well, who, they call me Mister Bulge. I think that that's who. Uh, no, please, <laughs> Mister Bulge was my father. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you have to do it. That's yeah. who uh, Barnum was talking about when you mentioned Fatty Bulger. <laughs> that is my father's name. <laughs> All right, well, let's play some D and D. As everybody, everyone's got their coffee. Everyone's yep. peed. Yep, yep. coffee. Yep. Um, I have two beverages. Yep. Oh, I don't have diapers. any dice for my kids. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, it's 15 minutes. Oh, wait. Oh, I, I did forget to put on my. Di- uh, oh. <laughs> Why? I, I hate this. <laughs> I really need a technical difficulties button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 bad one. Yeah. Wait, what did we say the code word was? I don't remember. Oh, aluminum, 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 aluminum pineapple 77. You can't say it, now it's fucked! <laughs> we need our safe word! We need a safe word. We need word. our screen we safe too. word. I'm gonna be having a hard time. I, I, like, like, oh, oh, I laughed for 12 minutes <laughs> when I read that. When I read that Trello card, I was laughing. Derek, my ass I feel like off. you could do a better job at doing physical comedy for a heart attack. Can you try again, please? <laughs> 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 oh Jesus! Yeah, that's getting way too real. Getting... Can, you, can you make yourself go pale yeah. on command? <laughs> Probably. Thank Let's not try. Thank you, Derek. Perfect. Oh, oh, Jesus Christ! That's, oh, that's yeah. dark. That's dark anyway. You never Let's disappoint. I can't wait to die at the table <laughs> someday. <somewhere. laughs> All right. Uh, the intro for this one will be very short. Uh, last time in Call of the Feywild, or once upon a time. Into the call of the I would like to play a maze. It's actually in the court of the Holly King, and it's once upon a time in Hollywood, and everyone just has dirty bare feet. <laughs> Yes, I finally get to well, take off these well, shoes. <laughs> well played. Oh, now we're gonna, we're gonna need a, we need to zoom in on the on the car windshield. Oh. Like, everybody put their feet on the car windshield. You're not choking her correctly. <laughs> let me show you. Here, let me show you how to choke. I know this one yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. oh wow. Bridge, can you cut that? <laughs> Once upon a witch. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> anyway, this will be very short. 
Uh, once upon a time in Prismir, <laughs> you all went shopping. You now find yourselves in the sog- in Soggy Castle. You have made your way down the main uh, the main thoroughfare towards that's the wrong word. Fuck this. I don't care. <laughs> you you're now standing in front of Bavlorna. <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> Oh, that's right. right. No, uh, you 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 are standing here, looking out over over the um, the inside of the castle, the soggy court, and it is beautiful. The pale stones are gilded in gold. The candles are held aloft in the air by <clears throat> the flitting wings of fireflies. All around you are members of the soggy court that are garbed in beautiful rococo dress, elaborate velvet coats, beautiful um, uh, beautiful gowns, embroidered, covered in lace and ruffles, hair piled top, high atop their heads, all clearly wigs, but mm. beautiful nonetheless. The smells of flowers are is almost overwhelming. Scents of, of <clears throat> flowers that you have never smelled before, clearly the flora of the Feywild. And at the very end of this long pathway through the ballroom, you see that there are two people seated in front of you. Clearly in the throne is King Gullip the 19th. <clears throat> he looks down at you fondly. Uh, at his feet is a an alligator that you recognize, a baby alligator, Snoodle who is dressed in similar attire to the king. Uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful, pale, cream-colored outfit that is trimmed in gold. He has uh, shoes on his feet with a large gold buckle, and piled atop his head is a powdered white wig. And Snoodle is dressed similarly, <clears throat> though his wig is uh, askew on his head, and he's clearly chewing on the parts of it that have made their way towards his mouth and sitting next to him <clears throat> on the left hand side atop not a chair but a lily pad is a frail woman she is <clears throat> she is plump with bulging eyes that can't seem to focus on one spot but as you look closer you realize it's not for it's it's intentional she is looking about the room in varying directions, using the mobility of her eyes to be able to scan places all across the room all at once. And what looks unintentional is actually clearly calculated as she watches and sees everything that happens in this room. Her skin is dry and cracked. Her mouth is clearly very, very large. And as you take her in, her froggish stature, you can clearly see that there is something about her that is almost snake-like in the way that she moves her jaw, almost as if it unhinges. And she's able to lick her lips as she stares out over the soggy court. She makes eye contact with you individually. One eye here, one eye there. One eye here, one eye there. She doesn't linger too long. Almost as if she's not all that interested in any of you. You're not on her radar. She scans the room, clearly looking for something. And you see behind her, two heads poke out. Entities that some of you have seen before. Her lornlings. Two of them, clearly standing guard, protecting their mistress. <clears throat> as King Gullop calls you forward. He stands up and announces to the entire court that his guests of honor have, have arrived. And the sea of people parts as the music comes to a halt. All the lords and ladies take a bow and they begin to chatter and look around as they stare at you. He calls out to someone to the sidelines and you see a you see a, uh, a bullywug in red attire, clearly, <clears throat> uh, clearly one of the trumpeteers. As he makes his way over and the king whispers in his ear, he almost panics a little bit. And 
rushes around the side, uh, bleats a little bit on his trumpet, and the music begins again. The lords and ladies look slightly confused as they look around, and the king motions for them to begin dancing again. And that pathway to Bavlorna and to the king is closed to you as the lords and ladies begin to dance. And then you hear, um, hey, hey. <clears throat> Name's Billy. And you notice it is that same trumpeteer. Oh. You're not dressed appropriately for a ball. So yeah. we're going to need to fix that. You, you got anything you can wear? I mean, I... Oh, Billy. You think I'm underdressed? I'm wearing a fucking tuxedo. <laughs> Billy, by the way. Billy Wug. Oh, what a do. Criminal yeah. crew. Your name, wait, your name is Billy Wug? No, I yeah. think he said Bill. E. Wug. Oh, oh. Like Bill, maybe William Eustace Wug. Yeah, oh. like, yeah, you gotta catch all the, you know, yeah. every, every piece of it. Is it Billy or Bill E? Billy. It's Billy. Yeah. Oh, well, I fucked that up. <laughs> and you're a, you're a Bully Wug. Yeah. And your name's Billy Wug. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. This is Dorbeck's nicest coat. Maybe we should take you upstairs and see what we've got, but you guys are gonna perform soon. Oh. Performance? Oh man, I didn't. I didn't think to ask the king if we, if I should take you to get dressed for the ball or take you to get dressed for the performance. <clears throat> I can't interrupt him again. I think we would like oh. to mingle a little bit, you know. You're not allowed to be in oh. here dressed like that. Oh. Well, why don't we go get dressed, then mingle, then maybe eat a little bit, and then you know what? The... I'll take you upstairs, and I'll ask one of the other guards to ask the king. If you come back after you're dressed, or if you go to the, hmm, damn it, yeah, I'll take you upstairs. And he looks around, and um, you notice some of the guards watching him. He's clearly, he's clearly the the equivalent of a bullywug, 15, 16 year old boy. <clears throat> this is his first gig. He's a trumpeteer at the palace. He's very, very uncomfortable. Um, but he very quickly moves um, moves you along the edges of the room. And you do notice that some of the bullywugs in the soggy court, their eyes continue to remain on you as you're moving around. And you do hear snippets of whispers, uh, talks of, how could they possibly show up to something like this, looking like that? Oh, it's oh. atrocious. Can you believe the king is fraternizing with people like them? Oh, they were knighted, you know. No, you don't say. They're members of the court? Oh, no, it's horrible. It's very clear that the snobbishness in this place knows no bounds, and you're clearly not dressed for this kind of event. But you are quickly able to slide through a side door, make your way up a winding staircase, until you find your way down a long hallway. It is lined with photos of ev or, uh, paintings of every single king of the Soggy Court. Hundreds of photos. Paintings. Fuck. Hundreds of paintings of Bullywug kings and queens until you are led into a large ornate room a blazing fire in the corner two large wardrobes against the side uh yeah so um i guess look through the wardrobe and and see we'll see what you can find uh i'm gonna pop out and uh i'm gonna see if uh if i can figure out what to what happens next but you you guys are you're you're ready right or like what? if the king asks, because at any moment he could snap his fingers, and it's it's time for the performance. So you're ready. You don't uh, need anything. Uh, well, we would like to at least discuss uh, props and stage settings and costumes well, at the very least. If there's if there's a costume director, no. Oh. Um. But in the opera house, though, there is tons of stuff. Oh. I'm talking. Costumes galore, hand painted props, all kinds of cool stuff. So we could get you down there at some point. Yeah, that would be. We just like to survey what's available, just so you know. We I've already got the old uh, opera up in here. If you know what I mean. I'm gonna leave you guys to get ready, and then I think I'm gonna. We'll see. We'll see what the king wants. You're doing great, Billy. 
I'm you really do- nervous. The king's never talked to me before one on one. I mean, to be fair, the last time I was in the room with the king it was a different king. But the king has never talked to me even once. Well, I mean, this uh, you're you're this is your first trumpet gig. I mean, yeah. Yeah, you. This is your first trumpet gig. How old are you? Like fifteen. That's incredible. My first gig was for the mayor's nephew's bog mitzvah. So the fact that you're at the uh, the soggy castle is like that's 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 big. You're starting off a lot grander than I ever did. So just keep just keep blowing that mean piece of brass. Thanks. My mom's really proud of me. She should be. She should be, Billy. You're she doing is. great. You're yeah. doing. You're doing great. And man. when I get home tonight, and I tell her that the king talked to me directly, and I followed his orders, and nothing went wrong, and so I kept my life, she's gonna be so happy. Uh, before you do any of that, just do us a favor and don't wear a red shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean like this red tunic I'm wearing right definitely now? Definitely take that off right now. Oh, yes. I'd get in a lot of trouble if I did that. Uh oh. Uh, no, it's too late to him. <laughs> No, but seriously, I'm gonna be fine. I'm. I can play three notes on this trumpet. Uh huh. So. Uh, well, right. we're doing great. We'll be here planning right. our propaganda. I mean, I mean, I mean, opera. Well, it was, it was really nice to meet you guys. It was Wish- nice to meet you, Mister Billy. Yeah. Meet okay. you, Billy. And he slowly starts to back out of the room. You know, if you need anything at all. Just let me know. Yeah, how about a bunch of food and uh, some drinks? Oh, I'll try. Mm, oh, well, so when you say anything at all, you can't do anything. <laughs> all right, bye, guys. Oh, oh, he's fucking party. He's slow. Yeah. He's back. Thank you, Bob, Billy. Bye. Bye. You're doing great. Bye. 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 Keep it up. Torbeck has a terrible sinking feeling, <laughs> and he can't put his finger on wine. We're going anyway, to. <laughs> we should prepare for this show. It's possible that it's because we have to prepare for the show. We have oh, to perform again. That has to be it. How did we get roped into this? I don't remember, but <laughs> I do remember that we had it, and the the grand consummate musician that I am, I have written a grand opera that will also serve as propaganda. Oh, thank goodness! What would we do without you? Pro- propaganda. Yeah, but it rhymes with opera. Oh, and it's actually quite clever. Uh, thank you. Personally. What uh, what kind of propaganda are you talking about? So, what we need to do is put on a chivalric romance story that stars Morgo, because we kind of mucked up the whole, uh, you know, trial by combat situation. Right. So if we told a grand story of Morgo, the Knight of Waltz, um... And we, it is very epic and romantic and very nice. They will, the people will demand that Morgo be released. And so it would be, it would behove the king to release her. Otherwise he'd get beheaded. I uh-huh. That's uh-huh. also not a bad idea. You think we're going to sway this whole uh, kingdom of people just with uh, an opera you whipped up in a couple of minutes? Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Is this going to be a, a drama, a, a comedy, a, a parody? Uh, Greco, can you roll a dexterity saving throw? Oh. <laughs> a live grenade gets thrown through the room. <laughs> uh, seven. Perfect. If, if Angelo would allow. You are having this conversation, and you you are able to pull out parchment with some, some written word, uh, the beginnings, if not most, of a script. Um, and you are talking about your plan. You're all huddled together, very excited. As all of a sudden you feel a large, or you feel a heavy thwack against the back of your head, taking one point of bludgeoning Ah, damage as a small hand cannon slams into the back of your head. And all in in the next moment or so, you are covered in different pieces of clothing. You all turn to look at the direction this that all of this is coming from, and you see the the doors to one of the wardrobes open, and you barely see the top of a toadstool hat as Twig is pulling things out of the wardrobe, tossing it this way and that. You will not believe what I found in here! And she quickly, she quickly jumps out of the pile of clothes she's created, and she is wearing 
the equivalent of a masquerade outfit, a beautiful Rococo dress, but themed to be a a pirate captain uh, with a curly white powdered wig and a beautiful tri-corner hat. Um, She is cinched into a corset. She has two fake pistols on her hip, and as she pulls them off and shoots them, they say bang, bang. Um, And it's very clear that the hand cannon that she threw that was tossed was a um, was an accident as it was attached to another piece of garb as it went flying and hit Greco in the back of the head. She notices it on the floor next to him. Oh, that's mine! That's mine! I call dibs! I call dibs! I call dibs! That's mine! Oh, um, <clears throat> is, should, is this like sort of like a theme party or are we just trying to fit in? I don't think so, but this is what they gave us and so I'm really excited. I've never been to a masquerade party before, so let's do it. And she holds up her little mask. Uh, yeah. Well, Twigsy, you're kind of generally fashionable. You got anything in there you think would look good on us? Yes. Um... Well, I could find things if you want, at least while you're talking about all this boring stuff. I could look for outfits for you if you want me to. That would be most appreciated. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. We clearly don't know what all we're to doing. I roll D100s, please. Oh. I, I lock vests, and I don't lock shoes very much, if if I can request. Probably not. Ah. Uh, Dormant got a 36. <laughs> nice. What? Nine to seven. Damn. Damn. Wait, you got a ninety-seven? I got a nine to seven. I got a nine to seven. Oh, oh cram it! <laughs> we get the match. Oh, we're, we're wearing one of those donkey outfits. <laughs> this is <laughs> unbelievable. You're the ass. Unbelievable. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? No, I was thinking like a couple's. I mean, like a, a couple of guys' <laughs> costumes. Yeah. Sometimes well, you guys tell I mean? the story. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it just makes sense. I don't know what kind of masquerade outfit is a. You know, like a duo effort, but I, obviously we found it here. I don't know. Like, what about like a sun and moon theme? I mean, I guess we're we'll oh, seeing Twig comes that's up. That's pretty with, good. I anyway, mean, you know, we both flame and shadow. I think okay. it goes without you, saying. You, you, oh, you want a couple's costume? Twig's got it. Well, no, a couple of couple of fellas. Yeah, yep. just a couple of guys' yeah. costumes. Yeah. Okay, couple of guys. Couple like of you're in guys, line getting sandwiches. Together. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna find that costume for you. Yeah. Um, okay, what, what kind of, just give me a, just give me a ballpark. Uh, I, uh, I got a 69, which is a number that people reference often. I'm it's not like sure exactly the reason. Okay, okay, so you wanted something a little, a little sensual, a little, like, flirty? Uh, I um, maybe used to wear like, green, but... Maybe some, like, assless chaps? No, 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 oh. no, no. I, I wanted to, uh, convey, uh, uh the, 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 the wealth, uh, that everyone else is attempting to, uh, to convey here, uh, oh. I would I would like it to be uh, in the style so that I I blend in to fit in. Oh. Uh, the elaborate floral patterns, lace, uh, the 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 breeches and the stockings that I saw, those little shoes with the the, the, buckles. the buckles, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the um. Very hygienic. A, a cape, perhaps. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh. I don't know, man. I've actually heard that sharing, showing your bare ass is how the elite establish dominance. <laughs> I'd revisit that assless chaps thing. They are a bunch of perverts. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Okay. Oh, and one of the wigs, I think. For me. Yeah, okay, for sure. Yeah, right, all right. Uh, Coco? <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I got a 54. Okay. Uh, you know, I like to keep a little bit of cash. You know, a little, little cash. Oh, so you want to be Mr. Moneybags with a little bit of cash. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mr. Moneybags. If whatever you recommend, I will wear because I am not known for my style outside of performing on stage or okay. in general. Yeah. All right, Mr. Moneybags. Um, sensual. A couple of dudes coupling couple together. Of fellas, yeah. Yeah. And oh, some ostrich feathers for me. Torbeck. Um, Torbeck got a 36, <laughs> and because Torbeck normally lives in a dumpster, uh, he's not very particular. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I mean, look at what Torbeck is currently wearing. So this is like, horrific. <laughs> so you kind of want, like, trash in the runway. I, well, I... 
Torbeck is probably going to think that people will just mistake Torbeck for actual trash. <laughs> okay, uh, so we're going to do... We're, okay. Well, yeah, Torbeck, um, if you just read trash, you could just say you're modern art. <laughs> Torbeck knows how much you hate modern art, Rico. Well, I mean, these are all fancy people. They probably think it's really, it's really deep. <clears throat> yes. Tor Torbeck doesn't want to get kicked out. And esoteric. Did you hear all of those people and the things they were saying? It's like high school all over again. Yes, it took almost everything I had not to mage hand one of their wings off their head when they were talking about it. So yeah, really these, these people yeah, are kind of mean. Yeah, that was not really nice at all. Oh, well, my it's nicest like, shirt that has holes in it. Yeah, I know. And the thing is, it's not like we're expected to be here or anything. We were forced into this. What if you dress in something kind of like derelict? You know what I'm saying? Oh! What? It's sort of like trash, but but cash. Dereliction. Like, Derelict. you know, like, like imagine uh. some trash bags sewn together with like, you know, McDonald's wrappers and stuff. <sighs> like What's derelict the McDonald's? Is like... What? Huh? What? What? Huh? Is, is there anything Ooh. like furs in there that he could wear? Or perhaps that would uh, complement an existing. Yeah, furriness? maybe. But the problem is, anytime it gets even a little bit warm, he starts sweating and it stinks. <laughs> so that'll be. That'll mask Torbeck. the stink that he has. Torbeck's used to it. Uh, Torbeck sweats a lot, you know? <laughs> Don't you guys? I'm I mean, like a lot, like yeah. where all your clothes are always moist. <laughs> no, like, no, not, you know, not really. But that's totally normal. Oh, you may have a problem. It's like when you take your displacer beast to displacer beast park, and you come back, and you're like, God, you smell like you're at the park. Oh, that's pretty funny. Just all, just all actually, the time. I think I'd like to, uh, oh. I'd like to uh, uh, take back my request for no shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, this shag carpeting is very soggy. <laughs> what shag carpeting? It's getting in my toes. Yes. Oh, it's very damn. I didn't know a carpet could be that. And bad. as you walk around, you realize the shag carpeting is only under your feet. The rest of it is a nice stone flooring. Oh. <laughs> That's weirdly placed. <laughs> it's just a patch. Yeah. It's like this, it's like in The Sims, and you just just, just being crazy with it. There's that a single be, patch and shag carpeting. It's be Snoodle's special spot, man. Yeah. There might not be shag carpeting at all. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna okay. go ahead and look for your outfits while you guys figure out what you're gonna do about this show. Oh, oh, oh! Can I be in it? Oh, I have a special role just for you, Twig. I've never been in a show before. <clears throat> I'm not really the actress type. Can you sing? Mm, well, can and is it good are two different questions, right? Well, my sense is that they've never seen an opera before, so I feel like anything we give them will be, uh, yeah. it's like, you know, Pearl, Swan, that whole thing. I have horrifying stage fright. Yeah. Okay. Well, good for you okay. is that Gideon <clears throat> has a special magical elixir that eliminates stage fright. So you can just really? down this magic potion and it immediately cures stage fright. Yes! Gideon, do you have one of those? I got it right here, Twig. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh. <laughs> After we get the infants. Yeah. Oh. oh. No, I think, well. Before the stage fraud. It needs time to kick in, fellas, even at her size. I mean, you know. Gideon! What? You're like 10 times her body mass. Uh, at what? least. Like, like 20. Is it gonna, <laughs> is it gonna poison me? Torbeck, are you gonna let him poison me? Torbeck's uh, had this exactly. He yeah, tell her. Torbeck was actually gonna ask Gideon if he had a bottle three times the size of that, based on the way Guy's night went before. Okay. Torbeck's pretty worried and will probably also need the anti stage fright juice. I think we'll all need it a little bit. I don't know okay. how I'm going to be singing in an opera. Oh, no, are no you whatsoever. a good singer, Frost? No, 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 no. Oh, Frosty, I wrote you as the like the leading role. Was you and Hootsie are oh, the leads? Hey, am I going to be playing Morgo? What, what, what? No, that's ridiculous. Hootsie's the the, the star. She's Morgo. You're going to be Wigglewog. That was obvious, man. It was always going to be Hootsie. But, but who's, who's who's Twig going to play? You're, Twig's me, by the way. You're going to you're going to bring an an air of tragedy to this <clears throat> this romantic chivalric romance. Oh. 
Yeah, so you need to basically really sell the sadness and you've been murdered in a well. <laughs> I've been murdered in a way? A well. Oh. Yeah, you're going to be a willow. You're going to be Willa the willow that we met earlier. You weren't there, were you? No, no. you weren't there. No, we met Willa. So you're Willa. And I'm we're all going to be, we're, we're, we're going to be supporting you, but okay. uh, you're the lead in that scene. It's going to um, be tough for you, Twigsy, because you're yeah. so dang positive. Well, you're going to have Thank to try you. and be, you're going to have to try and be a little down, a little down the well, um, if you know what I mean. Kid? Yeah? Hey, nobody else listen, okay? Okay. Hey, kid? Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah, are listening, yeah. right? What? No. no. Okay, cool. Uh, hey, hey, I can't hear. Oh. I can't hear, all right? Yeah. Just, just plug your ears normal, like. Yeah. What's up, Twigs? Do I have to die to play a Will-O-Wisp? With Grinko, you can never really tell what he's going to do. I mean, it's possible he, he kills you somehow. Will you be able to bring me back if I die? Yeah, I, I won't let him kill you all the way. Just, just only to, most of the way. It's probably just prop death, you know, just like a little bit. You yeah. remember when Kremmy killed you, kinda? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and Max, it's like it's like that. Like okay. he's gonna be, but just this time, if you're on the brink of death, try not to, you know, flail out in all directions and kill to... so much of the crowd. <laughs> oh, no, I was gonna... She pulls out her wand. I was gonna put this away so I couldn't hurt anybody with it. That's what I wanted to ask. Because my instinct when I'm when like something happens to me, you know, is it just uh, and I want I know I'm really scared. Uh, and so I just wanted to make sure I didn't kill Grico accidentally. Yeah, well, if I think he killed the, me first. That's the problem, right? Is everything up but to this point? I yeah. have to be a consummate is that what you call it? A consummate actress? And I have to make sure that if I'm actually dying, I really bring the drama. I'm no too good with words. I usually go to Gricko for the maintenance, but I get so confused because I'm starting to think he's no too good with words either. Yeah, so I'm, I, <sighs> thanks for having this side conversation <laughs> with me where they couldn't hear anything we're saying because I was feeling really nervous about them knowing I was no, really nervous fine. about dying for real. If you're going to take a little bit of sip of this, you're going to forget all your nerves are just going to melt away in the warm embrace of uh, whatever is in here. And I think it's totally fine that you use that wand. We don't even know what it does yet. I think you just point it around, you flail it all about. What could possibly go wrong? Just not at the audience. Well, I mean, just an off chance that it's like, you know, when, when I had a battle chuckles and he kind of pointed with a toy when gun. When he called he, you little bitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Can <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. No, I don't even... I don't even remember that a little bit. <laughs> oh, did he? Did he? Uh, uh, no, I mean, but you know, when he pointed that stupid cheap gun, uh, and I had to duck out of the way so fast yeah. with my expertise, uh, and he just like evaporated half the stadium. You know, I mean, just in the event it's something like that, you know, just be on the lookout. Before I let them listen again, will you do me one more favor again? Yeah, you know, well, yeah, I'll do you this, all right, even though last time I lost everything that made me me, but, you know, right. so, I'll see, I'll see, we'll see what the cost is this time, but, yeah, well, go ahead, Twigsy, for you, go okay. ahead. Um, if I really <clears throat> die for real, like, if I'm, if I believe in my role and I go, will you tell everyone I love them? I will, Twigsy. We would never let that happen. Okay. I but, don't want them to know feel that way right now, though, because i got to keep up my hard, toughened exterior. Yeah, you're doing pretty good about getting in the role of, uh, you know, a depressing child. So <laughs> I just want to let you know that. But, you know, if it goes that way, like, we're really starting to get there. If it goes that way, I don't think it will. But like I said, I mean, Gringo's kind of a little unhinged. So I, you know, I know. We know what he's going to do. I know. But at least it's not Torbeck when Torbeck goes, uh oh. Oh! Yeah, we can't let that happen. I know. You gotta figure out what that trigger is. You know what I mean? That's weird. Oh, you guys can listen again, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I heard oh. everything. <laughs> what? No, I, mean, I, 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 I heard everything. That's very intrusive of you, oh. you know? We told you to just not listen in, okay? That was a touching you. moment. Yeah. Now I'm embarrassed, all right? Primacy yeah, is a common decency, <laughs> Frost. I'm standing five minutes, I mean, five feet away. It's very difficult. What are you to talking about? I'm two feet away. Yeah, well, Three feet down. 
down at least. Yeah. Yeah. Square grid we're standing on. I mean, it doesn't matter if you were standing right in between us and I was speaking in my normal volume. I thought you were ear cuffing, you know? Well, five you in, uh, yeah. in a perfect square. Here we sing. Grego! Uh, the part has broken in two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, everybody. Right, can we listen now? Yes, yeah, we you can listen now. now. Welcome back to the conversation. Man, I'm just huh? getting into the good part. Okay, so can you have some of that drink now? Oh, well, how do you guys feel about it? I don't want to create like a situation around here. Well, hold on. Do you mind if I give just one director's note when we get to doing the play? To me? Yeah, to you. Yeah. Just, you know, once you get into it, just no war crimes, all right? Just to know, don't explode anybody's head, and we should be fine. We covered that. We covered that in the side. Oh, bar. you did? Okay. Yeah, I told her to try to erase the did. crowd while she was at it. Yeah. All right. Well, did you specifically well, specify yeah. head, well, ex- head exploding? Hey, did I specifically specify? <laughs> what? Huh? What? Crummy didn't listen to our conversation. He's trustworthy. I know, yeah. I've always trusted Crummy. He's a good guy. Frost can't be trusted. Yeah, no, Frosty can't <laughs> trust a doll. Yeah, no, he's real, like, you know. See, remember that time he went into the mud? Were you there for that? No. Oh, yeah, I think he was like, well, actually, Crummy was trying to drown all At the point of those <laughs> times, his knees got all locked together and started screaming, my fucking legs. I mean, it's the only thing you can trust about that guy. He can't get anything done without fusing his legs together. You can trust me. I don't know what's going on with the legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Frosty. You don't need your legs with your brain. Your legs are more for logs. This is foreshadowing. I'm gonna <laughs> <say. laughs> We're, not We're not <laughs> We're gonna get a floating chair. And uh, if like... I could just get a fucking yellow floating chair, yeah. I'd be so happy. <laughs> Isn't it a little how that X Men movie ends with James McAvoy? Doesn't he yes. screaming, "My fucking legs!" <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. New path for Frost now. New uh, path. New path. Yeah. Oh, Frost goes totally hairless. So, yeah. can I have that drink now, so I can get out of your hair and let you talk about your thing? Oh yeah, I'm cool with it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just don't, oh, yeah. just don't explode any heads. All right. Kermit made me okay. promise to specify. Thanks. Thank you, Gia. Thank yeah. you. Oh, get you oh here's drink. your song. Thanks. Do I get to make up the melody on my own? Yes. I would like a little bit of artistic license, please. You can have that. Like I said, I think we are casting uh, some <laughs> pearls before Swinay. <laughs> <laughs> casting your pearls before Swinay. Exactly right. How do you All fuck right. that one? <laughs> Let me, can I just take a look at those two prop 10th uh, level spells you got on your belt there? I'm sorry, what? Can I take a look at those prop... Tenth level spells you got on your belt there. Are you talking about Bing and Boom? Yeah. Or should I call him Bang Bang? Oh my God! Can I just see him really quick, just to make sure? Well, that can you answer my question first? Yeah, I'm talking about Bang Bang. Yes, I knew it. That's what I wanted to do. Oh, and she hands them to you. My Twizzy shut me down. <laughs> <laughs> bang bang. Well okay, now leave me alone. I got a lot of work to do. All right, you do your thing, Twizzy. Okay. Twigsy, just remember, I know you might be scared, but you don't need courage because you have those. Who needs courage when you have a gun? <laughs> yeah, that's what my mom always said. Yeah, she was a very wise brownie, yeah, let me smart tell you. Smart lady, smart lady. Yeah, Where so can Torbeck get a gun? <laughs> Torbeck got a gun. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to write that down. Mm. Everyone's so musically. Uh, and, uh... Twig makes her way over to the wardrobes. You see both the doors are open now as she's rummaging through them trying to find the proper attire. Gideon, are you sure that she should have alcohol? Is she going to Roger Rabbit out and just go fucking crazy? We, I don't, she's a brownie. We don't know. I, don't, I mean, man, she spent half the campaign licking toads and getting high. I think she's got probably a pretty heavy tolerance. That's that's uh, hallucinogenic uh, toad sweat. That's totally different than... <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the ratios, man. One to one could be one to one. Could be a little offset. I mean, I don't know. I, I you know, I hit it plenty. And Torbeck's had it by the gallon, you know. Well, so yes, I mean, we're all uh, capable of drinking alcohol. I just don't know about brownies. That's all. 
Listen, man, ain't nothing wrong with giving her a little bit of something to wet the whistle to give her uh, some of that courage. You know, it's not just all in the prop gun. It just seems Sometimes like a strange time to... to do it before she prepares what we need to wear in order to look good at a <laughs> extremely <laughs> sensitive situation in front of a hag and also about to perform an opera. Wow, I didn't really love to think about it like that. I mean, to be honest with you, I didn't really think about it too much at all. She just asked for it and I handed it over like any good host. All right, well... We'll see what happens. Are we doing an electrum shift before or after the play? Oh, electrum shift too. Yeah, there's a lot of there's, just, there's a lot of performing we gotta do. I thought doing. kind of the. Um, uh, I was just gonna say like we're gonna have to cook things when, and be judged for the things that we cook. Is that is that the idea? Uh, you know, it wasn't very clear, but I mean that was the impression that I got. Yes, tool bag. <laughs> Do they have a full body hair net? <laughs> That's oh pretty my fucking God. funny. <laughs> Torbeck's not really allowed in kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> we just need to get you a fishnet bodysuit. Oh, oh, man. Uh, a fishnet. Oh, can you picture it? Because my eyes are starting to bleed. <laughs> that was oh. a big old like garbage bag. Just the whole thing. You well, know? listen. I thought the whole point was just uh, Kremi over here is the only one doing the chefing, and we're just trying to build it. We're trying to work up the audience to give him a good, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, benefit to mm. it, just so people are happier with him or whatever. Perhaps we can create some effects. We yeah. can, you can chop up an onion, and we can make, like, a little volcano come out the top. Oh, that's, you know, oh, that's quite nice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Uncle Globo taught me a thing or two. I'm, I'm pretty handy in the kitchen. Yeah, I'll, I'll make, make potatoes I'll make food for Hoochie that's uh, very nutritious. Effects? I'm like magic? Yeah. Uh, Torbeck of can course. only really do this. And I, Torbeck holds up his hand and his finger like gets long and horrible <laughs> and horrific and like twisted. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, oh. And then it retracts. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that's it. it uh, that's, uh, oh, uh, that's about all Torbeck has up his hairy sleeve. <laughs> just just the one finger or can you do that with each of the fingers? All of them. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure what you wanted. Well, I mean, maybe if they have like really tall cabinets or something, you could open those. <laughs> Okay. Well, look, I mean, if it's a team effort, if you know, if I got to fucking sing and read from the script, which is not my thing, by the way, I like to go off the cuff, then, the re- you know, it can be a team effort, we can each cook a dish. I'll handle the main course if that works for you fellas, but... I don't think it's something. Oh, this is like the old days, fellas. <laughs> it's like putting on a show, and, 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 and now the rubes, as Crummy would say, are just a bunch of frogs instead of just... A bunch of people, including some friends. Hey, Torbeck. <laughs> yes? I found your outfit. Oh, thank you. What did you pick? I found a vest with 100 tiny pockets in this white sequin glove that's size for a human. <laughs> okay. Uh, Torbeck will reach out. It's a, wait, it's a, it's a vest that has 100 pockets. It's a sequin Tiny one? pockets, yeah. Okay, I'll put the vest on. I guess Torbeck will take off what he's currently wearing. Oh, I want the vest. So then all, I'll, I mean, I won't have pants or anything. So I'll just strip down completely naked. And I'm just basically a hairy Bigfoot at this point. And I will take the sequin vest and put it on. Close your eyes, Twigsy. Yeah, I'm just a, big, I'm just a Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. I put on the sequin vest and it's like kind of tight and there's a hundred little pockets and sequins. I will reach out uh, with my left hand to take the tiny glove. And I will. And look- as you do, you hear in your mind, hee hee hee, <laughs> and my, I'll, t- I'll pick up my right hand, and it'll <laughs> like shrink to fit in and, this and, tiny. And glove. it oddly does fit. And as you, you feel like you have the ability to move in a way you hadn't before. You now gain the ability to moonwalk. <laughs> Tormek is suddenly feeling a bit more coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> Toba, you look very stylish. Mm, thank you. I you can feel the breeze do, do, through my legs. Why don't we? Can we get some like matching tight leather pants? Twigsy to match. Yeah, the I best. Mean, I can look. With a jacket. Uh, yeah, Torbeck know. doesn't know. Torbeck's pretty happy without pants. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna let him go down there with all that going on over there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> They might be into it. You never know. <laughs> they could be. And Torbeck, you do moonwalk. And for oh. all intents and purposes, while you're wearing this glove and this outfit, you have advantage on all performance checks. Just constantly plays. Torbeck! <laughs> 
Krimi, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Krimi? Krimi, are you okay? Mr. Krimi, are you okay? Mr. Krimi, are you okay? Gideon's not my love. Oh, you, you look very okay, stylish, well, Torbeck. I will, I will look for pants that will fit over Torbeck. Uh, I'll be back. Uh, don't rush. It's all right. If you don't find any, no big deal. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All. Bye. Well, we, I mean, I feel like this is appro- appro- apropos. Mm. Yeah, we're Coco. Uh, um, Torbeck will make it work. Bless you. Mm. <laughs> um... Okay, I feel like we, we're gonna. We, so we got a schmooze, we got an Electrum Chef, we got uh, a play, mm-hmm. and we got to figure out a plan to, you know, kind of do a little bit of political machinations and change the culture with a little bit of subterfuge and cultural revolt. Don't we also have to do a false flag operation? We already did. Tolbuck took care of that. Uh, well, I mean, we planted the seed, but we haven't watered anything yet. Oh, don't worry. The final act is going to feature the greatest false flag of them all. You really have it all together today. It's just <laughs> remarkable. Yeah. Oh, oh dude. Gosh, I did major in poli I remember. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. And so what's the goal of all this? The goal is to turn public perception in favor of Morgo, so that once they see, oh, she's the champion of the people, she's the greatest knight whatever lived, then they will clamber with their clammy hands for her release, and everything's going to be great. And we're then going to also weave in a little bit of false flagging subterfuge to turn Blavrona against Scabafa. And blame Scabber for, for everything that's going on. So we're gonna reveal that the books with the balloon fellas? Yes. Man. That's part of the final act. You worked all that into the opera? Well, we'll see how it goes. Before we say shit about the book, do we have an airtight alibi? A what? An alibi. What are you talking about? What's that? I think oh. you mean the Nullaby. I'm a Libby. <laughs> oh, of course. I've, I've thought of everything, Kremi. <laughs> Why didn't you say that? <laughs> While they were stealing the book, we was off in the swamp not stealing nothing. That's pretty good. Huh? I mean, do we have a witness? I tore back here some pants. Oh, okay. okay. Tore back. Psst. Uh. Huh. They don't have any. They don't have any cloth over her butt cheeks. Done. Okay. <laughs> I was just warning in case you didn't. No, nope, I snatch them off and I begin to put them on. <laughs> and they're a pair of leather assless chaps. <laughs> oh, oh wow. <laughs> How does Torbeck look, fellas? It's more about how Torbeck smells. <laughs> <laughs> then I just, I just like moonwalk in circles around them. Yeah. <laughs> Made admittedly better. Admittedly better. Cheek chillers. Say what you will, he's got moves. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, I didn't know he could do it. The he's rhythm like... is flowing through Torbeck. <laughs> <laughs> can you do that lean thing? <laughs> Oh wow! Well. Oh, there's there's <laughs> furniture un- in the way. For us. It is uncanny how he leans. It's almost as if there's no gravity in the room at all. Mm. All right. Well, I guess the rest of us. Will just oh, wear this. everyone, get your lyrics to your songs. Here oh. you go. Here you uh, go. Oh, found oh, it out so for many you. words. Here you go. I can't sing any of this music. You what? Expect me, you expect me to sing this? Yes, you you one of the leads. Right. You are Wigglewog. I have the, no singing voice. The valiant no troubadour I no that rhythm. I invented. It is literally impossible for me to perform this. Frosty, you're gonna be great. Grico. Yes. Of your outfit. Oh, let's see. And she walks over to you with a her arms filled with golden metal pieces. And as she um, as she helps you get everything put together, you all watch as once there had been Gricko, and now there is a candlestick man. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
<laughs> he's he's covered in wax. He's essentially yeah. Lumiere from Beauty yeah, and you. the Beast. Yeah. yeah, no, no, but why did you do yeah, this why? in the reality of the world? <laughs> Chocolate <Why>? Blue! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you think this outfit gave him a different language? Like, uh, dancer for Torbeck? <laughs> yeah, I will say it does. You you notice that your voice has changed. Oh. The language of the bullet hugs. Oh, uh-huh, you are correct. <laughs> oh. It's the fucking brightest. <laughs> it's Gromwee, Gricko. Oh, oh, Gromwee, Gricko. This is her. Dorma can't understand him anymore. <laughs> What's he saying? I have him covered in gold. I have a nice intrinsic value. <laughs> <laughs> You're Mr. Yeah, Moneybags, just like you told me. Well, all of the wax is covering my face. I can, <laughs> I can, I can barely move my lips. <laughs> just another nut and goblin uh, colors. Chocolate blue. <laughs> oh, even that made Dormac wince. <laughs> <laughs> How do I look, a fella? Are you stuck like that? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you're gonna... I feel a very fancy. I feel a fancy. I can't wait for you to explain to them their roles and their performance. Do I look like a um, frog? <laughs> Well, you look kind of like a candlestick, yeah, if we're being just, honest. Just wax and gold. Oh, la, la. <laughs> I think you're going to fit in perfectly. The Magnifique. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do the popping thing? That's very French, right? They do that. I'm, I'm stuck like this. Yeah. So now I just need, I'll need help carrying things. Yeah, I'll just, <laughs> let me use my um, invisible mage hand and, and just hold your mouth open like this. Like, like, Wrist. Well, it <laughs> doesn't have a wrist. It's a little wrist. Are you gonna have to perform like this? Uh, I hope not. Certainly. <laughs> uh, that raises a good question. Torvac is looking at his role and. Doesn't see how this matches this. <laughs> I think we will get you the costumes. Uh, Torbeck's not so sure we have to be that hasty. <laughs> Doesn't this feel like overkill just for like a dinner party? I imagine that's the point. Everything they do is over the top and outrageously luxurious and wasteful. Frost, I found your outfit too. You said you wanted to be sensual? I don't recall saying it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so the thing is, I couldn't find anything sensual, yes. but I did find this outfit that looks like a weird milky white puddle, and she hands it to you. <laughs> what the fuck? You asked for that? No, I didn't say sensual, and I didn't... I, I, I thought I thought wanted something traditional, I something that I uh, to fit in. I thought it was maybe a gelatinous cube, but melted. But I don't think that's what it is. Yeah, sacre goo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I knew it was funny. Seriously, his mic opened his mouth. I was like, Mason's not funny. He throws his phone down. I got that. <laughs> 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 that was brilliant, Mike. Uh, I'll write that down. <laughs> How do I put this on? I think you just step into and become one with it or something. <laughs> <laughs> and for all intents and purposes, you become a caboose. <laughs> No, we see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, this is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. <laughs> uh, some class. Uh, I asked if he'd be able to fit in, and I, uh, I'm soggier than ever. Thank you. And you watch as he's just rolling around on the floor. It's just this weird gelatinous milky white goo uh, with two eyes. Clearly Frosty's eyes in the middle of it. Oh man, we're gonna have to get him a bucket to bring him along. <laughs> <laughs> it feels very strange. 
It's almost like I have I no could, bones at all. I could find you something different if you don't want to be sensual, but that's the only mostly sensual thing I could find. You thought of the word sensual and you brought me this way too? <laughs> <laughs> How could you? Well, from a certain <laughs> point of view. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Did you at least find the shoes with the buckles? <laughs> <laughs> like a Mr. Potato? Oh my. <laughs> my eyes are starting to like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know really how this. Good. I don't know how to take this off. That's <laughs> really good. <laughs> Am I gonna have to perform this thing? Uh, I think you should try again. <laughs> re-roll. Uh, oh, re-roll. Oh, re-roll. Uh, all I have to do is re-roll. Uh, Twig, this is very kind. Of, I just don't know if I can have any kind of social interaction. You know how limited I am in these ways. I just. I, I wanted uh, something that uh, no one would suspect. That okay, was... well, give me another rough idea of what you want if you don't want to be sensible. I'll take a 98. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Okay, well, I found this glass jar filled with a weird Milky Way. <laughs> <laughs> How does this Where are you keep getting happening? all this white substance? <laughs> why, do you, why do you put it in a bowl? Yeah. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> Answer me. Uh, Defend yourself. <laughs> I thought they made joke that even I am not comfortable making. <laughs> oh, uh, that would have been the bag. <laughs> if you don't know what you want, let Twig figure out what you want, okay? And also stop being two of you. <gasps> Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, give me that back, alright? You've had okay. too much. There's just one, you know? It's empty. <laughs> it's not it supposed to be empty. <laughs> oh my god, it's supposed to be endless! It's empty! You might actually die! Oh god! Well, uh, I don't know how to take this oh. off, and there are two. Uh, it's, it's, can someone else wear this other one so that I don't feel out of place, at least? No. I don't think so. No, shut up. I said I'll get you another one, Two Frosts. Thank you. <laughs> I what? think we should rewrite the play. It will be about the strife of the people. What do you think? How is that any different from what you were Let me the frogs. <laughs> Is my masterpiece. The <laughs> Miz of Frogs? It's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. The wax is covering my nostrils now. <laughs> <laughs> is someone that pleads a book of two holes? <laughs> Should we just put you out until we get to the party? <laughs> Ooh wee wee! <laughs> that name. means a yes. Yeah, right, no, 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 you get the yeah. back. Come on. <laughs> okay, I found this outfit for you. Okay. And she hands you something that looks like a <laughs> oh, shit, um, right. like a Walmart child Halloween costume, and it is clearly of a map, a treasure map. I think that'll be better than this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, here. No! Oh, shit. I gave it to the wrong frost. No, no, I've got it. What? See? Huh? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Can you get the back? Can you just pull, pull that? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I lit it on fire! Oh, 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 And she walks oh. over to you, too, with two lobster costumes. <laughs> Did you know that lobster's made for life? 
don't oh. really know anything about lobsters or how that's relevant to us. <laughs> yeah, and that's so, sort of unrelated. It's just like a fun fact about lobsters. Yeah, and you guys. Look, guys, it's the lobsters are two bowls of goo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, know I mean, obviously, you we'll, we'll wear the lobsters, I think, but I, you know, I'm just saying it's not, you know, quite relevant in any way, but yeah. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll put it up. I'll yeah. Put it up. Okay, perfect, yeah. Well, I like the red, so I'll put it on <clears throat> too. The other one's a purple lobster. Oh, oh. Well. I'm not sure if it's naturally purple or if it's a thick seed and. <laughs> well, maybe I'm like a pre-cooked lobster. You know what I mean? They're not really red until they're steamed alive. Oh, so I'm the steamed alive lobster. Yeah. Huh? Oh, okay. Would, you know. Oh, so my you claws know? wouldn't be moving. I'd be just like, you know, done. I get. Well, no, you could, it's sort of like a magical. You're, you're basically like a like an undead zombie lobster. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Are we ready to go? <laughs> well, I think... <laughs> do, our costumes, do our costumes give us uh, any special powers as lobsters? Do, or are we just lobsters? You're just lobsters. Oh, okay. All you, right, you just check it. You have a swim speed. Yeah. Oh, you need to to whatever wild. your swim speed is. Yeah. If Brinko doesn't say burning out the dancing lobsters at some point during our opera, <laughs> <laughs> Are we performing in this? This is, what, this is what we're performing in, in addition to going into a social. I event. said in the other night, I was uh, there. Oh, uh, uh, hey, hey, uh, it, it's, it's me, it's Billy. Come on in, we're only kind of. Oh, oh. Come in, we young. <laughs> what are you? What are you guys wearing? Well, we what? chose our outfits so that we'll fit in. I'm a burned map. <laughs> I look like the intro to the TV show Bonanza. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for us, our viewers won't know what that is. More like a baby Bonanza. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, my little uh, Frost is dissatisfied in the situation. <laughs> He's just so damn funny. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, okay. Um, I was instructed to bring you back down to the ball. Yeah, no, we're uh, ready. This is, this is what we're going with. At least until it's time to move you to the opera house. So... Sure, this looks better than my fine green robe. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Lead the way, Billy. <laughs> I really, I agree. I love with the process. <laughs> uh, and with that, he does begin. <laughs> Quit licking it, man. Quit licking it. I'm trying to carve it off your lips a little bit. I'm good. Okay, okay, okay. It's making okay. it seal. Oh, God. Oh. 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 Okay, you're clear, man. Uh. Uh. Thank you. Yeah, just don't look around your mouth, all right? You're gonna, you're gonna intake some of that. It's gonna get into your bloodstream. I've already swallowed the ten gallons of eggs. <laughs> oh, what? Eggs? Uh. I thought he said eggs. <laughs> oh, oh no! Ten oh. <laughs> gallons of ass? That's way too much. How do you cross your eyes like that so quickly? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the dinner plates are dancing! <laughs> oh, <Holy shit>. uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> and uh. Ching, <laughs> I will be right down. Ching, <laughs> and it is with that that you are escorted back to the room, uh, back to the ballroom. And as you make your way in, uh, Billy quickly jumps to the side of the door, and in sync with the other, uh, the other trumpeteer, they announce your arrival. And the once again, the room stops as you make your way in. A burnt map, candlestick, 
Michael Jackson <laughs> and two lobsters. Oh, hey there. The entire place just goes silent. You see 100 winged heads. <laughs> All at once. A tumbleweed rolls in. Yeah. And then as silent. soon as the ice picks us and the tumbleweed is gone, Torbo will start to go backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and as to, at first, there is a com- there's complete silence as everyone is taking in this sight. They are appalled and uncomfortable and repulsed as Torbeck turns around and his assless chaps are viewable to all in the oh, room. About oh, God, no. But just as he does, he begins to dance. And you hear, oh, 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 oh. and you, uh, you see a pair of panties fly across the room and land on his shoulder. Oh, and I stick them in one of the hundred tiny panties. <laughs> Are these frog panties? They are frog panties. 99 more pockets to go. <laughs> and the band follows suit and begins they to also throw begins their pins? to no, they begin to play. As above the sound of the band, you hear the sound of clapping, and your attention is drawn to Bavlorna Blightstraw. Who's sitting across? Uh, who's sitting atop her lily pad, with a sinister smile on her face as she claps and looks at you. The king seems excited uh, as he wipes the look of uh, fear and worry off of his face and begins to smile and clap as well. And everyone begins to dance. Occasionally, people move up next to you and. Oh, welcome to the soggy court. You must be the new knight. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> greetings. Uh, hey. I am Count Grumple. Uh, your name is? Oh, yes. I am Dame Soggington. Uh, pleasure to meet you, Dame Soggington. And you as well. I love your treasure map costume. Yes, it will be very popular next season. I was not. <laughs> not I was not informed it was supposed to be a masquerade. Oh no! This will be the regular clothes that people wear soon. Oh, is this a new law the king is bringing into existence? No, it's just because it looks so fresh. It's half You're fashion. on fire. And she pats out one of the oh, small. thank you. I was wondering <laughs> if that was just my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was lovely to meet you. Do you enjoy the rest of the ball? Dame Soggington. <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> hey, Frost D, why is the X right over your crotch on the treasure map? <laughs> I'm getting a drink. I want to like shuffle over to the bar. There, and there's no bar, but there are um, there are uh, bullywugs that are walking around with silver platters that house uh, all manner of beverages. Um, that you could. Yeah, There's swamp pain, which like is a sparkling swamp water. Twigs, you can't be the only one that's drunk here, all right? Come <laughs> yeah, on. yeah, since we match, I got the yeah. fucking numbness. We gotta catch up in 20 times a shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. I like to imagine that the map is just holding my arms in the same way that you're locked in. Yeah. To, uh, I've never been so happy that I have a mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll snatch two glasses of whatever off a tray. Oh, hors d'oeuvres, please. Uh, There are no hors d'oeuvres. It Uh. is very clear that because of the impending uh, Uh. Electrum Chef, that they have prepared no food. They want people to be incredibly hungry for what's to come. (sighs) But the swamp pain is unlimited. (laughs) (laughs) What did you say this was? It's called Swamp Pain. Swamp, or so Swamp Pugney, depending on where you're from. Is it just sparkling swamp water? <laughs> yes. Oh, pleasant. Yeah. Make like sure you get the mother. 
and it's just <laughs> that is foul. That is that's across the line. I'll take ten more buckets of white goo, please. As Kirby puts down the two glasses, Torbeck picks them up. Unlimited. Yeah. Oh, you can drink. <laughs> yeah, you can only call it swamp pain if it comes from swamp pain. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it's just sparkling swamp water. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what do you think, Gish? Should we try to mingle with old Bavlona? You know, get on a good side? What do you fellas think? Well, the Bavlona, I mean, shit, man. What, what are we going to say to her? Like, hey, you looking. Like a fucking witch. No, 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 no. The fucking opposite of that. Oh, you don't look like a witch at all. I'm sorry. We'll I mean, walk, you look very unmagical. We'll walk right up to her and say, beat it. Beat it. <laughs> no one likes to be defeated. <laughs> man, when did you get so good at stuff, man? I love that. It's just all in Dorothy. Oh, uh-huh. God, man, maybe you should write the opera. <laughs> <laughs> You sure we got a good Libby? We're not gonna fucking blow this. It will be fine. <laughs> All right. With I'm my watching. new found knowledge, we will bring out the guillotine and behead the hag in front of the people. Hey, you be cool, you man. It will be a bloody revolution. Oh, Viva la revolution! No! 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 Chunk of the melted wax is shut <laughs> 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 I look like Clayface <laughs> from, the, from Batman the Animated Series. Uh, it's horrible death scene. If you remember that? Oh, uh, yeah. good. That's nah, really well, good. That's who Ben Affleck should have played on the side of yeah, my Maybe with his mouth sealed shut with hot wax now, we can go over there and talk to her, and uh, he won't be screaming about bloody revolutions or the like. Mm. Uh, do we have any agenda or any questions to ask? Well, I suppose we have to go say hello, but can we get anything out of that? We're going to walk right up to her? Why not? I mean, this is a shindig. All, all, all right. do. I'm gonna but a bottle. if she says that Torbeck is the one... The kid is not Torbeck's son. <laughs> Torbeck, what the fuck are you talking about? Torbeck's not really sure. <laughs> it just is bubbling up inside of Torbeck and coming right out. <laughs> he just with one pair of panties and you just go fucking insane. <laughs> well, it might be the panties. It might be the assless chaps. Yeah. Who's to say? Mm. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's, I mean, just don't. Bricko, if I remove this. Can we drop all talk of royal executions? Mm. <laughs> Viva la revolution! <laughs> Is that the last one? You just needed to get out? Mmm, we wee. Okay. All right, fine. I'm gonna like rip it, like I'm like I'm waxing oh a mustache. Oh. Instead of ripping. Oh. 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 Uh, uh, I am lit tired. <laughs> well, we just gave Greco a grill, a grillion. <laughs> I was working on that mustache for five years. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you had a mustache? Uh, That's as far as you got in five years? Uh, that guts deep. <laughs> <laughs> it smash cuts like a hyper-realistic oil painting of like, just tiny... They're like really tiny, tiny thin blonde. Yeah, 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 wax yeah. that comes yeah. off, there's like three hairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Uh, as all of this is happening, you hear a squeal, loud commotion, and a bunch of laughter. And you realize that in one corner of the uh, one corner of the ballroom, there is a, a circle, a crowd of people, and they're all staring at something. And the some of them are gasping and looking shocked. Others are guffawing. Uh, there's clearly something interesting happening um, off to the side. I look for twigs. See, <laughs> she's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Cha-ching! Right. Let's get in. 
Were you keeping an eye on Twigsy? Where is she? Did she stay in the room? I don't I don't recall. I mean, she came down here with us, but I just assumed she'd be getting the party started. You know what I mean? I mean it's a it's a party, right? Is it possible that all that cruel laughter is <laughs> to do with a drunk twig? <laughs> Oh, man, I don't know any Michael Jackson song titles that are relevant to this situation, but, um, well, we could check it out. I suppose we could. I, I'll waddle over there with you. I know you don't hear this a lot, Frosty, but I think that in this one specific instance, you might have been right about giving her something to drink. Thank you for admitting that now. <laughs> well, go. you know what they say about hindsight. Come on. <laughs> I walk over with Gideon to see what the uh, you, is you walk about. over and they they make room for you and you're able to squeeze in and what you see is a um, there are tables that line these walls spaced here and there for people to get off of their feet and enjoy a drink and um, to relax a little between dances and things and what you see is twig in her full regalia with um, with bang bang unholstered as she is looking down at a very dapper elderly bullywug who is sprawled on the floor. He looks like he's actually been hit aside the head and knocked unconscious. His twig staggers around on top of the uh, on top of the table. And I'm telling him part order and everyone is just howling with laughter. They don't really know what to do with her as she stumbles this way and that and she she steps directly off the table and would normally plummet, but one of the bullywugs lifts her over and places her back on the table. It's very clear that this has happened a few times. <laughs> and you're able to see very quickly that uh, even more people are beginning to mill about. And though it is entertaining in sort, Twig seems to be okay. She's very intoxicated, but the bullywugs, even though she has knocked this man unconscious, he, or almost unconscious, he is laughing on the floor. He's holding, they've got ice up to his head and he is just having the time of his life. Uh, you're not quite sure what <laughs> transpired here to get to this point, but they all seem fairly enchanted by her. And you are able to see that it leaves the portion of the room where Bavlorna is seated and the king are seated fairly uncrowded. And that if there is an opportunity to gain an audience with her, it is probably now while Twig is stealing the show. <laughs> oh, Frozy, I take it all back, man. You weren't right at all. <laughs> She's doing great over here. I hit him again, Twigsy. <laughs> okay, you gotta get bang, bang, smacks <laughs> around the bully. He starts laughing. Oh, 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 man, man, not to dig in that. If you get a little tired, do not sleep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that guy's not making it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go talk to Bad Lorna. This wasn't a problem at all. Yes. <laughs> we walk over to Bob Lorna. You're just going to walk straight up to her? Well, backwards. Yeah, he's walking backwards. <laughs> I'm sort of walking. I'm hopping. He's hopping. <laughs> Um, they're walking sideways, I guess. No, 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 they walk forward. Um, yeah. I'm thinking of a crab. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, we... the king and Bavlorna uh, appear to be um, deep in conversation. Uh, as you begin to approach, her eyes move this way and that, and you notice that one of them is firmly focused on the commotion that's happening around Twig. Um, the other one, however, is darting this way and that between each of you. And as you get close enough, she whispers something to the king. He nods. He looks to all of you. He bows slightly. You see his wig begin to slip as it almost falls off of his a clearly hairless frog head. Um, but he, he holds it tight to him as he actually steps away mm. and uh, leaves the room through a side door, leaving you alone with Bavlorna. Um, she, the one eye trailing all of you as you walk <clears throat> up. So you have come to see me. What to do? No, oh, mademoiselle. And I'll reach out to grab her hand. You are a flame. 
But she, she. No, I just get wax all over. <laughs> <laughs> you are enchanting. Her, she pulls her hand back, and there are strings of wax that are hardening as she pulls away. Apologies for that. Let me just take. Uh, that he's no well, worry. That no, he's I mean, mostly wax. Yeah, she might have enjoyed it, man. Give her a chance to just soak in the experience. You know, some people like that kind of thing. This seems to have a nice effect on my hands. It is a great moisturizer. <laughs> And she rubs, she begins to rub the wax into her hands. The dryness of her skin immediately causes it to begin to crack and crumble onto the ground. Oh, well. Uh, greetings. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Count Grumple of Bog Bottom. And what is your real name? Uh, well, I mean... We're trying to be respectful of the people at the this here masquerade and uh, ball or whatever the fuck it is. Uh, and we were given these names when we were made members of the court. I do not like when people lie to me. Hey, it no makes lie. me very uncomfortable. He was given the name Lord My Crumpled My sisters Dumple, are quite <laughs> the liars. Did they send you to talk to me? <clears throat> well, who are your sisters? Mm, tisk tisk. I can sense the deception in your voice. I've never forgotten a sister a day of my life, I don't think. <laughs> Not that I can remember. Roll a persuasion check. I would say at advantage. Tun, tun, tun. Oh. Oh! Oh, I need more space. I'm bad. Uh. <laughs> uh, 20. With a natural 20. I will stop talking after this. You do look like the kind of person that would keep tabs on a sister. Oh, thank For you. For probably nefarious reasons. Oh, well, uh, well, they wouldn't consider it that way. <laughs> You are dressed very strangely for members of the Soki court. We were dressed by a brownie, and we were just trying to, you know, The one that her. punches the elderly? Yeah. <laughs> and was using the tacky stage pirate accent. Yeah, I mean, you know, she, she means well. She's drunk. A busy prank, bro. <laughs> they seem to like it. Well, yes. we, we wanted to meet you officially. Uh, you, uh, we can see you're the guest of honor. I was invited by myself. Oh. So... Or you may think the king rules these lands, but no, it is I, Bafulorna. And my Lorne Lay. And she motions to the side of her, and you see the two Lorne Lings peek out, peek out from either side. Oh, I had a feeling you were coming. <laughs> what do the Lornlings look like? Uh, they are, they look like little versions of Bavlorna. Oh. Um, but Ooh. where she is much more frog-like, they are more lithe and small, but they have very similar features. Uh, their eyes going all over the place, their mouths are clearly agape. Um, were these the creatures I impish? saw? Do they what? Like almost impish? Yeah, I can show you a photo. And these are the same creatures that I saw bathing her. They are. And this one, one of them stole Hootsie. So I'm like looking. A little swamp pain comes up into my mouth and then I swallow it back down. (laughs) Swamp pain. Yes. Um, Oh, no. I believe it is in the back. She's busy. Is there music? Yeah, it's just very quiet. Oh. Are the speakers turned down? I don't know. I can turn it up. Yeah, crank that shit. Is that good enough? It's audible. Absolutely. It is audible. All right. <clears throat> so, let me put this here so I have a place. Oh, so I made it worse. Right here on the tree, that's a Lornling. You can pass it over. Uh, yeah, let's go. You can actually see all three of them because they've it's all the been described. Yeah, so these were the three that came and started. Look at that little fuck. Dude, put, put, it on the, put it on the thing. Oh. Yeah, that's creepy. Here, you ready? Oh, God. Oh, oh God. Oh, oh, put all those away. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at this oh, little no. fuck. 
Look at him fuck this guy. Oh, the one oh, in the tree. Yes, the one yeah, so oh, in the tree. Oh, this, oh, this in is the, the tree. Lornling That's here. the Lornling. The middle one is oh, the sow pig. Oh, it's a like frog, frogman. Frogman. Look at these fuckers. Uh, I don't like his face. I hate him. Kind of. So you can just this. put it where it... Yeah, right there. <sighs> <clears throat> I have a feeling that you are awfully cunning to be able to establish yourself high and mighty mm. above mm. this whole town. Mm. Mm. I do have my impressive traits. Cunning is one of them. Well, uh... <clears throat> have you lost anything? Have we lost anything in particular, or have you had something in mind in terms of what we may have lost? Do you come to Lorna to make a deal? You lose something? You need me to help you get it back? Yes, you give my dancing back? Oh. You've lost your ability to dance? Not technically, no. I mean, I didn't lose it. Bought it some was with it. Stolen from you. Well, I think technically yeah. Grammy would call it like a fair trade. Yeah, I, don't think it was I could help it was you to there. get your dancing back. Oh. Oh. Yes. <laughs> oh. Well, well, well. Well, this situation is looking up. Oh, French you fries. Look like you are missing something from the very. Soul, the very core of your being. Well, now that the cat is out of the bag, uh, yes. Oh, oh shit, was that supposed to be? It? I wasn't supposed to say. The, uh, uh, and do you miss it? Do you want it back? I have lost a few things as Frost. Uh, I've exchanged an ounce of my fear, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I have lost what uh, was taken from me by the rabbit folk when we first arrived mm -hmm. in Prismere, my memory of the kind gesture that Greco gave me mm -hmm. by producing that whistle. Um, so I guess I, the answer is yes, but do I get a sense that one is more important or that I'm feeling that I'm losing either of those things or do I not care? I would say you know that something is lost. Okay. Um, you don't because they've been taken from you, I would say you don't understand the gravity of what was taken, mm. but you do know something was taken from you, and you may want it back. And I think because of how smart Frost is, you would have the understanding that your perception of its value would have been altered by the fact that it mm. you have no memory of it. Mm. It is hard to know the value of uh, what has been taken, but I... I would think that something like a memory would be priceless, for you are the only one who is ever able to experience it the way you did. Hmm. What a shame to lose something so unique, so intrinsically you. I actually had not thought of it that way. Perhaps by uh, its nature, of the, how it had been taken. And who knows how you have changed with its loss? Hmm. And you, silver-eyed alligator. Silver <clears throat> eyes and silver tongue. Kind of fits, doesn't it? Uh, but, I mean, you know, I, I I see what you're getting at. Yeah, I did trade them away. It was fair and square, but... If it, you could have them back the way they were, would you want to have it? Depends what the uh, terms of that sort of arrangement might entail. Hmm, interesting. What Very are you thinking? interesting. Is that something you could help us with? Do you... Little candleman. Oh, right. <laughs> oh. Big Mademoiselle. Jesus. <laughs> oh, French bread. I am not sure oh. you are the type I can help. Oh, I, I have lost something very precious to me. 
the words you seek to recover are neither important nor necessary. The deal was for the best. <laughs> best to mm. keep things as they are and not <laughs> alter the course of things. <laughs> I am blue, you do reconsider. <laughs> <laughs> Then you, Market of the King. Uh, um, well, uh, Rebel, uh, is really only missing one thing currently, and Rebel's pretty sure that nobody can give Rebel that back. And it's just time. Five whole years you have been parted from your friends. Sounds about right. I can see the time stretch between you like strands. You have walked timelines differently. The Feywild is in you now, isn't it? And you can hear him knocking at the door. No. Hmm. A way to sever the connection that he holds to keep the power in your hands, not his. It could be interesting to someone like you, don't you think? Um, uh, Ribble's not so sure how to answer. No, you would not be. But the time is nigh for you to perform and make Lorna laugh. We will talk after. I invite you to dinner at my house tomorrow. And mm -hmm. we will talk more, yes? Oh, what's you... on the menu? I'm so hungry. It will be a surprise. Oh. Wow. I will make something you will love. And she, the smile she has on her face is incredibly wide. Far wider than you would expect her, her mouth to be able to move. But it does. You can think about what you've lost and what you would be willing to barter with to get it back. Very high price. Invitation accepted. And, you know, if you're looking for some capable fellas to take care of some things for you, just, you know, let us know. We might be able to make a deal. We will talk at dinner. It right. was really lovely. Will you be a, ju a judge at the, the contest of Electron Safe? No, I will not be. I may not be able to attend the cooking show, but I will be here. Sacre boo! <laughs> you must attend! <laughs> you can ignore him. Just get back to you. Oh, fly pain. Did you double book pain. yourself tonight? Fly, fly you can't make it to Electron Chef? You got other plans? Not that it is any of your business, mm. but... Damn, that's another fuck you moment, huh? I know. Jesus. I mean, when you're pow as powerful as she is, you can do that sort of thing. Yeah. I'm sorry, what were you going to say? This is twice now. You dare to interrupt Babylon a bright light straw, and I so kindly offer you my assistance in reclaiming that which you have lost. Do you find this to be alright? The way you speak to your betters. Were you sent by them, my sisters, to be disrespectful? No, I mean, no. <clears throat> no, no, Did no. Did we... send you to my domain? No, 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 no. no. What? You know of Skebitha. Well, only just because you just said her name. I mean, I don't know what said. Disk, disk, I said Skebby. Didn't you, you say know Skebitha earlier? We know it's Skebitha. Her eyes dart this way and that. I'm, I'm normally pretty confused by lots of stuff. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I could have just lost the situation here. I wouldn't read too far into it. I'll spit on the ground and it'll be a huge glob of... Wax slowly going down. Oh, are you suffering uh, from wax fumes intake? Probably. You would no, you idiot. Oh, man. What the fuck you in this conversation tonight? I'm just trying to have a party. Damn. Everybody's just fitting in. We were harried by the 
Minions of Scabitha. Oh, that was my foot. <laughs> I cannot see. You have wax, like, sticking the hairs of your butt cheeks together. Oh, that'll never come out. You know how much hair Torvac's gonna lose? Oh. Somebody's gonna have to shave him. Oh, I look like the antagonist of the 2005 <laughs> horror film House of Wax. <laughs> Starring Alicia Cooper <laughs> and that, Trent Michael Murray. Is that how that movie yeah. went? Uh, I feel like we can just pull it off and the hair will come free. Uh, it doesn't seem that big a deal. Oh. Apologies for any offense that you may have taken uh, at any of this. And I think whatever you might be able to gain from our assistance, maybe... You could return in kind with uh, providing something we may have lost, or uh, I would assume Many that- Many come to me to make deals, and they always walk away. Very happy customers, you will not be any different. Mm. Tomorrow night, All right. when the fireflies take flight, mm. head to the trail of mushrooms. Oh, been there. And let the Lornlings leave your path. All right. Fireflies, mushrooms, and Lornlings. Yes. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure. And I will see you in your show. If I am impressed, I will make sure you are rewarded tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. Only that will be performing well. It's been so long since I have seen a play or an opera. Oh, what was the last one you saw? Was it good? No. Oh, well. Oh. Bodes well. Before we bid you adieu, mademoiselle. The theater is my sister's domain. Yeah, they put on Sal Piggy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one where he goes to these the are, big city? <laughs> <laughs> these are just a Peppa Pig reruns. <laughs> oh, is this the one where she cracks the quadratic equation? <laughs> Before we bid you adieu at dinner, I must implore you to try the gray stuff. He's delicious. Here we go now. It is time for you to prepare. Find your little frog friend, the boy. He we will own. lead you to the opera house. I will be in box number two if you want to look for me. We will. I thank you for inviting us to be your guest. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I was waiting for the right opportunity. <laughs> I kill you! <laughs> what a do. What a pleasure. <clears throat> cha ching. Cha ching. We'll and knock your socks off. Cha ching. Guaranteed. She sticks her little legs out, and you see her long, um, spindly toes, her cracked toenails, and she wiggles the menu. Oh. It says nothing. I'll tip my. So I'm, I'm picturing that these lobster costumes are just like kigus. Yeah. Like felt pajamas. <laughs> yeah, basically. Kigus. And we have like little mittens on. Yeah. Like, uh, and it's just like You're a just big onesie. And, but I put my hat over top of it uh, with the eye stock still up in front. Uh, and I'll tip my hat and I'll turn and I'll start looking for the red shirt. I mean, William. <laughs> Uh, he's easy to find. He's still standing at the entrance. Um, he's uh, facing the door. Twitch. Facing the door. He is on the right side, um, and he is holding his um, he is holding his trumpet, just doing his job. You are making your way towards the entrance to the ballroom, uh, directly towards Billy, when you hear a loud thud and a gasp. And you look over to the side of the room where Twig had been performing for everyone. And you see that some of them have parted. And she is face down on the table, snoring loudly. Oh. <laughs> She's not going to be able to do the performance. Uh, 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 let's help her. 
Yeah. Gideon. Yeah. I mean, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it was bear me from my fate. <laughs> You're responsible. <laughs> I hate this. <laughs> I took two twists out. You've been furious. Oh. No, it's, it's not a. Oh, it's not a twist. It's not, it's not a, a costume. Oh, it's just a uh, costume. Yeah. <laughs> I point as wax covers my face, and I look like the my primary antagonist from 2005 horror film House of Wax, starring Paris Hilton. Oh. Grief. Oh, she wasn't in that, was she? Yeah, she was. Was she Cooper? Yeah. Wow. Also, Paris Hilton. Well, I refuse to take responsibility for this. Not because it's not my fault. I just refuse to take responsibility. Well, well at least go collect. Yeah, 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 I'm going right now. That's why I'm doing Jeez. lobster hands, man. Come on. Alright, okay. come on. No, I'll get it. I'll scoop her up. Yeah, scoop, scoop her up. Uh, no one seems to get in your way as you quickly scoop up the unconscious twig. She is snoring and drooling on <sighs> herself, uh, but you are able to collect her and make your way towards Billy. Support her head. Uh, yeah, obviously. Alright. Oh, come on. Uh, it's, uh, hey. It's, a, it's Billy here. I, I, Billy, uh, yes. no, I, I saw the red shirt, yep. Yeah. yeah, I actually forgot your name, so thanks for that. Uh, Jimmy is uh, the other trumpeteer. Billy and Jimmy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just two of you? What do you got? Yeah, he's my cousin, Jimmy Wug. Jimmy Wug. Jimmy Wug. And Billy Wug. Mm -hmm. James and William Wug. (laughs) Your parents must be so proud of two (laughs) trumpeteers in the family, like, your age. Yeah, they are. I mean, that is pretty impressive, given how young... Yeah, for the king. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps one day they'll write a story of you both. You should just take us to the opera house. At this yeah, point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let so. me. Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll get you guys down there. Uh, it's it's not that far, and it's not. It doesn't take you that long, um, even with uh, Greco's candlestick body, uh, to make your way down to the opera house. Um, you are making your way down toward to the very first floor of the Soggy Palace. And as you descend the grand staircase, you realize that it is partially submerged. And as you get to the bottom, uh, you are put into boats and you traverse the rooms of the soggy court, the first floor of the soggy court, as you're going this way and that until you find yourselves at another stairwell uh, that leads up. And you... uh, you send and walk through different hallways until you eventually open up into a beautiful grand theater. And it is pristine. There's no sign of moss or algae. It is, it looks like it's well kept, or at least it was well cleaned today. Uh, and you are quickly shown around the different boxes. Box number two is pointed out to you as that is where Bavlorna will be watching. What? What is so funny about box number two? Nothing. nothing. Mm, That's funny. Please continue. (laughs) That's very funny. What? (laughs) That's pretty funny. (laughs) This is your thing, number two. It's fine. No, seriously. Is it really a poop joke? (laughs) Number two? Number two is funny. Number two is poop. Everyone knows number two is poop. You're gaslighting me or something. No, no. You don't know that number two is poop? Number one is pee pee. <laughs> Kelsey is just dying somewhere. <laughs> Church street. Kelsey is just laughing her ass off Church somewhere. Street. She doesn't know yeah, why. Yeah. <laughs> that's all. That's all. Please, please. I'm, I'm going to do a pet every time you say it and then we'll move on. <laughs> but is that necessary? <laughs> It's no, kind of funny. It's, it's not necessary. You but you're going to do it anyway. I don't have to do it if uh, you want me to do it. I'm going to look out for snail number two <laughs> in box number two. <laughs> and he's not there. Fuck! Uh, but you are able to determine that, that this is the box that Bev Lorna will be watching from. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're also able to see the king's box, which is uh, the direct middle of the theater and has clearly, clearly the best view. Um you are led down into the uh, orchestra pit and through a door towards the back of the orchestra pit up into uh, the deep recesses of the theater until you find yourselves in what is clearly a theatrical dressing room. There are bullywugs darting this way and that as they um, as they collect things and begin to set up things and uh, 
you are informed very quickly that you are able to give whatever orders you need. They will either create or find whatever prop designs and set designs that you need and all of the all of the costumes that you need. Uh, and it doesn't it doesn't take long once you're back there to for Grico to take control. Uh, you quickly change out of your outfits and put on just standard um, standard uh, cozy fare as you um, take the opportunity to direct the stagehands. We need something a little bit more medieval. Well, we can ask them to perhaps construct a set. You've done everything else so far. I am genuinely impressed by the amount of music, the, 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 the libretto. You, you, you've oh. written mean, lyrics. You've, you've created music for 90 to 100 musicians, all with <laughs> counterpoint and uh, 44 different types of instruments. Uh, this is remarkable. How did you find time to do this in the, <laughs> the last 24 hours? Frosty, it's an interesting place being in my head. An interesting place being on my skin now, and there's a bunch of crusty wax. You've swallowed a lot of wax too, I've noticed. <laughs> I don't feel so good. No, you should probably find a restroom. That I am retired. Something like a waxative would probably uh, go right through you. <laughs> you think? You think? How long I should... have you been sitting on that one? <laughs> what? How long have you been sitting on that one? All for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just hope the bassoon players have the right embouchure for the the music that I've written for this production. Uh, did you hire the Frog Harmonic Orchestra? Oh, that's pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, that's pretty good. We had a Frog Harmonic Orchestra back in Goblin Town. It was just a bollywog with a harmonica. Uh, oh. That's all he was. Okay. Well, I mean, I feel like we 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 wait. If there's an orchestra. Yeah. I wonder, hey, guys, mm. I know we said that we wouldn't commit any war crimes tonight. Did we? <laughs> no, I think no, actually we, we just told Twig not to do that. Oh. I don't think we committed. No, that also applies to us. Oh. No war crimes. No war crimes. No war crimes. Okay. None? Not even one. Okay. What kind of fucking war... war? I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that there's just a, saying. a. Did somebody see more crap? No, no. I mean, hey. I'm a low key, yeah, but I, you're not suggesting that I'm we actually commit drunky. more crimes. <laughs> I'm suggesting. You're, you're sober up. We take a take a little page from uh, from uh, Mr. Tear and Tino, and why don't we pull in the glorious bastards on uh, Blavona? Why don't we sabotage her box? What, what, why? 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 Why would we do that? For, what, what could we possibly get out of doing such a fucking stupid thing surrounded by potential enemies? Well, we... And I think... Remember, the name of the game is False Flag. <laughs> we pin it... On Scabify. Oh, I fucking hate yeah, Scabify. Oh, we're, we're screwed oh, on that front. The, the false flag operation is done. We've already given away the whole goose. We've we've. She was oh. able to sense our our sales instantly. Whatever alibi we had in mind is going to be seen through immediately by her, and she'll assume that it was us. Why no. would she assume that? Yeah, why would she assume that? We were just maybe over there in the vicinity getting robbed of all the things that make us us. It seems very convenient. She could make a deduction. <gasps> I'm, man, I'm feeling very devious tonight, guys. <laughs> yeah, apparently. I'm feeling. What if we we check her box? Okay, we still false flag. We still false flag. Okay. Yeah, obviously. Uh, but we say that we found a weapon or something from the the uh, the little fay we bartered with, huh? I'm with you. I love this plan. And we say, oh, we saved you, uh, Bavlona. We, we saved a day. Has anyone got anything kind of thunder related or cloud like? So you're telling me we're going to walk up to the box and be like, oh, we found this live grenade in your box. Mm. We just saved the day. Oh, Tony, put that down. <laughs> oh, be careful with that. Oh, what do you say? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 15 minutes to curtain call. 15 minutes. I haven't oh. had time to practice, and I barely can keep any tune at all. Oh, Tweezy, we need to get in, 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 so we can get Hootsio. We need to get in a costume. 
Go so, back, come over here, Rosie, man. Wake up. Okay. I need you to just do something real gross in front of her. Wake her up with your smell. What, what does that mean? I, I just, just stand there and I just smell bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you think I can, Torbeck can just do this on demand. Yeah, Jeez. wait a second. Keep talking, but I'm going to stand right next to Twig's nose. Just keep talking. Uh, okay, okay, I'll just keep talking to Gideon. <laughs> I, you know, Torbeck doesn't <laughs> know what. Mm. Oh, she's oh, it's roused. working. It's working. Keep going. She's man. rousting. Well, I don't understand. Jarvik doesn't understand. Does kind of fuck with kid? Move, move, her, move her closer to the asslessness. <laughs> she starts clearly dreaming of this thing she calls a catoblepis as she attempts to punch it with Gideon in tow. Oh. Well, I really thought this would work. That's all Thorbeck's got. Get in! It's the stinkiest creature in existence! Uh, it's a catapubus! Well, something's and getting through. People call it a catapubus! But really, who knows? Alright, well, if Thorbeck's smell couldn't wake her up, I think she's lost. Stage, stage hand, stage hand. What? 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 Are you talking to Twig? Oh, I. Or, uh, that worked. <laughs> I guess. Sure. Uh, yes. <laughs> That, that, I am talking to you. We uh, need to get inside of your tiny house, made large, so that we can get Hootsie out. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. I can't let you in, but I can let Hootsie out. Oh, well, that's that's what we need. That's yeah, we just need Hootsie. Oh, okay. And, and she reaches down. What? You just make yourself a cup of, you know, displace a beast piss while you're down there. Just <laughs> no. chip yourself up a she little bit. She opens the door to her, her little purse, and Hootsie uh, was waiting there, and she quickly hops out, and within seconds uh, is Hootsie-sized. Oh. oh, Hootsie, oh, it's been so long I missed you. I hope you're enjoying your flight. Oh, you've been very busy and distracted. Gosh, it just works wonders. <laughs> God, best purchase I ever made. Anyway, it's time to get you. You are going to be a knight. Here are your lines. Here you go. I, what do you mean? <laughs> don't, 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 you, Uncle Gideon has some stage fright juice. No, 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 that's, no, that's alcohol, isn't it? Oh, yeah, well, it's definitely alcohol. Did you alcohol. say you needed some stage fright juice? Oh, what about a, what about a song syrup? A song syrup? Oh, yes, if you're, if you're not naturally inclined to performances or singing well, we can get you some song syrup and it'll wet the old whistle and it'll allow you to sing like an angel. I'll take three. All right, <laughs> just one moment, then. And he walks over to a cabinet and rifles through and uh, brings out uh, a tray filled with uh, quite a few bottles, I'd say about six bottles of <laughs> song syrup and uh, stage fright juice. And this will make me able to sing and perform? Uh, Sonny, if you can't carry a tune now, you sure will be able to soon. Drink it down, drink it down. <coughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well played. Well played. <laughs> How are you feeling? Do I feel different? No. I feel the same. Try singing a song. No, wait, don't. Just channel it. You can do this. Save it. Don't ruin it. For what a if, play. What if you only have so many goes? Uh, yeah, I'll save it up. Nobody talks everyone, to me. Everyone wants to have... I'm not going to have some other voice of an angel already. Does anyone need one? Oh, not for me. I'm all natural. Torbeck? Torbeck is beyond help. Okay. Giggle, giggle. I mean, sure. I'll, I'll, I mean, you know, this was outlawed in the Battle of the Bands. But, you know, I'll take a little bit of performance-enhancing <laughs> magic. You know what I mean? He's for Battle of the Bands. That's Krimi? adorable. Krimi? 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 My voice isn't too bad. I... Crummy? Oh, fine. Do it, Crummy! Okay. Do it, Crummy! <laughs> okay! Who's are you okay? Uh, are you okay, Crummy? <clears throat> what? Crummy, are you okay? Are you okay, Crummy? People keep saying that. I don't really understand. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You're getting flushed in the cheeks. Ten minutes to curtain oh. call! And I'll say, presenting Sir Morgo and the Wart Knight. And all, you all, all, I've been spending this whole time uh, getting Hootsie a very ill-fitting night costume, <laughs> and so she'll be like this, uh, like like when you put like uh, your chunky dog into a costume, uh, I love it. and like oh, it fits 
perfectly. You are so perfect, Hootsie. And now remember to do your stylish jigs for each of the, so each of the acts, you know, there's, it's, 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 uh, it, it's really not a free act structure. It's more of an uh, avante garde uh, uh, production telling a chivalric romance. And, oh, you're also the, uh, the, the, the key core to this propaganda. We're going to change some culture. Anyway, you, you just, I, I know I can trust you to perform. And all the while that this is happening, there are bullywugs, uh, bullywug, st- bullywug stagehands, darting about the place, uh, constantly asking you what you need. You are getting outfitted. You are everyone, including Twig, is now outfitted in the proper costumes. Uh, you have been able to direct them as to the lighting changes. The uh, the orchestra has been given the um, the the composition, the music. Um, there are set set up cues and Gricko is somehow um, for the sake of brevity able to um, easily manage this entire troupe of theater bullywugs as you notice you you hear the theater filling and then you see the lights dim as the candles are turned down just a little bit all of the uh, the oil lamps or turn down just a little bit. And you know that you have minutes, five minutes to curtain call. <laughs> I know it may be a little late to change this, but given that they're <sighs> frogs, do you think that we should call this a hopera? Fuck! <laughs> 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 oh, it's too late! All right, all right, all right. Oh! No, 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 I didn't mean, I shouldn't have said anything. Why didn't you say that earlier, uh, Frosty? Was, was oh, now I'm like, going to be in my head the whole night! Uh, well, you know, it's... You know, mm-hmm. Fuck. Frosty, you look really you look just like Wiggle Walk when we found him alive and perfectly fine. I like those big poofy pants. Oh uh, yeah, the, 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 the pants. You look like a, a true troubadour. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. I feel in character. Uh, I'm very, very nervous, but I will do my best for you. Frosty, I thank you. Everyone has their roles, and we're going to need the costume changes. All of us are basically. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Remember, we're all in every scene. So, because, you know, it's one of those things you want to pay actors a whole bunch of money, so we have people repeat the same roles, and it's kind of cringe, but it's fine. Is it hot in here? Yes. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Dorbeck will do his best. It's going to be fine. Just focus your mind. I'm doing the same. To the best of my ability, just. Relax. Hey, Willa. Breathe in. Hey, Willa, you're not twigging no more. Hey, Willa. Just imagine Willa. the whole audience naked, all right? You'll do fine out there. Ew. Oh, God. Uh, just a word oh. of warning. Remember that nothing rhymes with orange, purple, <laughs> or silver. Don't fall for that trap twice, Torbeck. Orange? What about uh, door hinge? That's, that's a cheap cop out. Get out of here, Frost. <laughs> Yeah, it is a cheap cop out. Get out of here, Frosty. But what about purple? That rhymes with purple. Oh. Uh, Dorbeck's not sure that's a real word, <laughs> but maybe. What about Gurple? Also unsure. Oh, is Gurple like a Feywild word? No. Oh. Sounds kind of like a flavor. Uh, you definitely purple, could you have know? convinced Torbeck that that was a fair wild word. I, I don't think that uh, that Sylvan counts as giving points in in the game of Scribble. Mm-hmm. So I think that. Uh, you imagine there's about a minute left. Okay. I need, okay. I need to take my cue. Okay. Wait, so I, all I gotta do is read the. I mean, can I have the script down on stage? Well, yeah, just as pl- oh, oh, yeah, yeah, just, I mean, just taking a note. The last, the last the list. Thing Remember, I'm going out, and you'll all be wearing a. Fro- <laughs> I'll be uh, wearing the uh, the frog suit from Super Mario Brothers Three, uh, with a tuxedo, <laughs> with a <Incredible>. tuxedo. <laughs> so good. Uh, okay, and I'll remember. I will be the narrator until I have the final. Roll of scavenger. Okay. Okay. Are we all ready? Just give me, just give me the word, and I'll start Places. singing. As ready the as lights possible. dim all the way, and you begin to hear the stage hands call out, "Laces, laces, everyone! It's time to it's curtain call. Let's know any changes. Places, places!" And everyone begins to move into place. So you take your places on the right side of the stage. I will Correct take my side cue. Of the stage. And, and you hear the trumpeteers. 
and then you hear a voice. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Soggy Court to the theater, the Soggy Palace. Today we have a very special event. The newest members of the Soggy Court will be performing an opera. May we welcome them to the stage. And there's a light spattering of applause as um, as the um, the bullywug makes her way off of the stage. The lights dim almost completely. The orchestra starts up with the beginning number as the curtain rises. Uh, as the curtain rises, you'll see the as a light is just on Greco. And uh, as he walks, uh, as I walk to the, the, the center of stage, and then it's <laughs> with my flipper uh, from my frog costume. And I will say, tonight's hoppera, and I'll give a wink to Frost off stage, <laughs> presented by Carnival Crew, tells a tale of comedy, tragedy, drama, and romance. I present the chivalric romance of Sir Morgo and the Wart Knight. Immediately, the crowd. <gasps> oh, what? Did you hear him? He said Sir Morgo. You mean that traitorous knight? <gasps> and the crowd is confused and scared and nervous, but they continue to watch. Enjoy. And I will bow as uh, the second- You sec hear a, a bit of clapping. You hear, Don't clap at that, Simon! <laughs> and you'll hear- uh, <laughs> And I'll actually blow up my ocarina. <laughs> as I play uh, uh, a cheesy medieval like trumpet, as I walk off stage, as the curtain raises, and uh, you will see a-, a uh, uh, a stage that is set however the bullywugs would do it. Uh, You're the DM a, now. And it's all just like uh, painted uh, driftwood all stitched <laughs> together like a stage play. Um, or like a, 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 a sixth grade stage play. And uh, there'll be like a weeping willows and it's just like streamers that are hanging down. Mm -hmm. um, Perfect. And there will just be uh, Frost in his outfit, as you can describe yourself. And then Hootsie will just be at the center as the light shines down as she just... Uh, sitting out looking at the crowd with a, a little uh, night outfit. And I'll say, our tale begins, um, as it will, my voice will boom out magically, with the honorable Nart Morgo, the Nart of Wartz, setting out from her town of downfall, alone, into, into far reaches, unknown, except for her dearest friend, the the, the beloved troubadour, Wigglewog. And music will start playing as uh, as uh, Hootsie will uh, get up and just start to do a little dance. <laughs> I'll step forward and I imagine the music swells. Music swells, yeah. <clears throat> All right, Frost. Let's see if you can do this. A legend is sung of when Morgo was young, a bullywug brave and a bold. Their goal to provide with sword by her side that downfall would ever behold. Each feat by her hand should be shared and adored. Now see her deeds in this court. There's a, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Hero in our midst in downfall town. <laughs> the great night of wars. Oh my god. Roll a performance check at it. Did he always sing like that? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he had it in him. You think that was the ju I should have drank some of that damn juice. <laughs> and we have to follow him. <laughs> Is that still an option? Fuck, 7% <laughs> Billy back. I only have one. Oh, damn. 
Damn! <laughs> Why did I start at such a high octave? I'm such an idiot. Uh, performance, you say? Yes, at advantage. Uh, 17. Uh, immediately, at first, the, the crowd is caught off guard. They're, they're exclaiming about Morgo, but then you begin to sing, and everybody quiets as a hush falls over the theater. You finish your song, and there's silence. And then the crowd erupts in applause, and you hear, Simon Clap! <laughs> Simon. Um, Simon can't do a damn thing right now. I, I'll, I'll turn uh, shocked. Like, uh, like I, I'm actually like just standing, standing there silent for like a little longer than I should be. Oh, uh, uh, what is the rest of my scene? Greg, I've, I've lost it. How did I do that? Uh, Hootsie's looking at you with really wide owl eyes too, as she's never seen Frost do that. And then she turns into the clapping bear from Harvey Birdman, attorney at law. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you see as Hoochie uh, stands up on her hind uh, legs and she uh, puts her paw to her uh, head and looks around and points around uh, and then looks uh, and then sits back down. Oh, and- yes. Morgo, uh, 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 the very wise and uh, brave you are to uh, point the direction uh, as we uh, have only just met, but I can already tell that you are a strong and fearless knight. <laughs> And she looks up at you like expectingly. Ah, that is exactly right. Uh, We have (laughs) much evil to defeat in this land. People to protect and aid uh, to provide succor. Succor? Succor? (laughs) Succor? Uh, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, We have to um, um, make our way to uh, 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 seek out our quests. Uh, at this point, there's like a piece of dust that's getting caught in the uh, in the lights of the stage play, and it's caught Hootsie's attention, and she's now on her back, like batting it around. <laughs> it's very uh, uh, wise of you. Yes, I uh, can tell that you care about your principles and your chivalric uh, code of honor very much. Uh, I will join you, and I will uh, write stories about you, and I will sing of your 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 tale. And uh, uh, it's not like I'm falling in love with you or anything. There's, there's certainly none of that happening. And then a, a single spotlight hits me, and I walk out to the edge of the stage. I am just a simple troubadour. No trouble do I seek. I just wanted a few coin for my song and dance last week. Will this bewitching fighter seduce this humble writer? Oh, what's a troubadour do? Do. <laughs> a roller performance <laughs> <you can manage. laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, 16. Uh, the crowd immediately erupts in applause, and you hear, Who is this man? Who is the dulcet tone, Simon? Get off your device. <laughs> Goddamn fly pads. <laughs> it's a fly pad. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, 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 let's make our way, and uh, uh, we will go, and uh, we will seek out the, the, your, the, the, your, one of your many for great first deeds, let's say. Uh, and with that, uh, they'll walk off stage as the curtain will drop. As uh, The audience applauds. They're incredibly happy to start. Uh, as uh, Grigo's running behind stage, he's pulling off his stuff and he's getting into his uh, new costume change. And uh, then uh, he'll call out, And so, the brave, brave Sir Morgo and uh, the, the Knight of Warts went off with her dear companion, Wigglewog, who was very deep in the friend zone at this point. <laughs> Brave, brave Sir Mogo rode forth and on her way. She was not afraid to die, no, brave Sir Mogo. Brave, 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 brave Sir Mogo. Uh, and as this, there is a, uh, and I was like, oh, stage hands, come on, come on. And then uh, and Frost, yeah, Frost and uh, and Hootsie are walking along, and then there are uh, a bunch of uh, frogs in black turtlenecks. Uh, trees. <laughs> moving trees. Yeah, moving trees and shrubs around. 
And uh, as they're going back and forth, as there is a walking montage. And so they set forth looking for frogs and other folks of the swamp to help and aid, as that is what brave nods do of good character who should not be executed by the crown. (laughs) Until they arrived at the slanty tower. And brave, brave Sir Morgo held her, her, her uh, owl bear, I mean frog appendage to her ear and heard the song of beautiful singing coming from the highest chamber trapped away in the slanty tower. I use mage hand to like tickle her ear a little bit so that uh, Hootsie actually does like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah. Uh, what? What? what you, did you sense danger, Sir Morgo? Uh, you're always so attuned to uh, uh, the uh, moral right and wrong. And on on a stage left, uh, there's a large uh, slanty tower. This is very clearly just a bunch of boxes stacked up. But there is, uh, and it's painted so it is uh, very slanty. But in the window, you see. Uh, the little window, so the boxes will actually just be as tall as Torbeck, and like the, there will be a little curtain in the top of the boxes, and the, the the window will part. The little curtain will part, and Torbeck will be there in this beautiful pink pointy hat with a with a pink uh, dress, playing with Torbeck's hair. Oh, it's Torbeck's time to shine. Torbeck is playing Princess Torbecca tonight. Uh, and You're Torbeck announcing will, this to the audience. Yes. Yeah, like out loud, just saying. <laughs> Torbeck will reach uh, down and pull out the tiny uh, tin whistle from the uh, match. Oh. Torbeck, 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 Torbeck. <laughs> Midnight, not a sound from the pavement. <laughs> Has the moon lost her memory? Torbeck is smiling alone in the lamplight, the withered leaves collect at her feet, and the wind begins to moan. Memory all alone in the moonlight Torbecca dreams of the old <laughs> days Life was beautiful then Torbecca remembers the time she knew what happiness was Let the memory live again Daylight, <laughs> Torbeck awaits for the sunrise. She must think of a new life, and she mustn't give in. When the dawn comes, tonight will be a memory too, and a new day. Will be begin. Oh, that was Torbecca's song. The audience erupts in applause. No role necessary. As uh, as Frost has paved the way for this, there is not a dry eye in the house. You can hear the sounds of Simon blubbering above them all, as everybody feels for Torbecca's play. Was that okay, Greco? Yeah, King, yeah, just remember your lines. No. Keep it well done. Oh, Don't, uh, uh, I hope someone fuck? were to come see Princess Torbecca. That is your chance, Sir uh, Morgo. You you have uh, 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 a deed, a feat, uh, an ability. Use your great strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and <laughs> uh, charisma in order to uh, 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 send the tower and save uh, uh, Torbecca. And so, the brave, brave uh, Sir Morgo faced with her first task as a knight, a very typical classic one the audience is familiar with, (laughs) saving a princess. It doesn't get more classic than that. Uh, And then uh, you'll hear a, uh, (laughs) you'll hear like a rattling as there's very someone, very clearly someone with maracas. Uh, 
This sounds like the rattlesnake. Oh, is that, is that my key? And then uh, Gricko will look at you, and we're all dressed as snakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> and we all. I, I put these like a big tube sock, and I'm just <laughs> and it, like it covers my head, and it's just. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, it's Remargo! Watch out, uh, dangerous snakes. <laughs> Oh no! Hey you! I'm the snake named Snake. I make spaghetti just like every snake. I don't got no hands. And if you try to meet the princess, and then I'm gonna really just awkwardly start like Cab Calloway dancing. <laughs> As big, big, like big jazz brass music just blares yeah, through the audience now. Playing. I'll wrap you up, drag you into my hole, cook forget without no fees. Now I'm the snake named Snake, and the princess you own me. Get them, fellas. Uh, Morgo. And we, we we all run out and we'll just surround them. No, don't die, Morgo. Defend yourself. He's like going to look around. <laughs> he starts nuzzling at Greco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's one of the snakes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, 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 I am oh, I, I like to imagine that each of you have like rolled up red scarf in like a pocket, yeah, yeah, but inside was like a fish. Yeah. And so like to, uh, who would just grab that and pull it out of your pocket. <laughs> that's, that's exactly yeah. what happened. We all have dead oh, rats. Oh, 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 truly you oh. are a great monster slayer. Oh. As is the classic nightly trope of slaying a reptilian oh, beast to save the princess. Oh, oh, we didn't even stand a chance. My pot handles. Amazing work. <laughs> I can't believe you were able to fell such foul beasts with your might and courage. No, oh, Torbeka's hero. And she'll like be trying to be to like do a kind of like uppies to to Torbeck as she's up against the window. Torbeck will just reach through the window with his extremely long arms <laughs> and like pick her up to bring her up to the top of the uh, tower. Oh well, Torbeka is a frog and needs a kiss. And uh, you'll see as Hootsy uh, does like this, and then she goes over and like gives you a little peck on the cheek. Oh, 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 that, oh that was nice. Thank you, my hero, Sir Morgo. And I'll like place her back down. This makes Sir uh, 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 Willy Wug sad. Wiggle Wog. Wiggle sad. <laughs> I, I, I always want to do Willy Wog. I don't That's know why. That's fine. You can call the wrong name. No, 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 no. It's fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggle Wog. This makes Wiggle Wog sad. I read that from the script. <laughs> uh, and you, Gricko will have, as this is happening, he will have been like a scraping himself, like trying to army crawl off uh, off stage so that he could get uh, go back and start doing his costume change. Uh, and he says, And with the, bre- the poor damsel in distress, Princess Torbeka, saved from the vile giant snake monsters, it, that was her first knightly act of great heroism and bravery and reasons why she should not be beheaded and slain in a terrible, terrible political public execution. Uh, roll a performance check at advantage. No, you. Oh, me? Oh. Don't go back and sing that word. You're well, propaganding man. them. <laughs> oh, yeah, double 17s? She didn't have any of the juice, oh, nice. of the juice man. I, I, am I crying? What? <laughs> <laughs> so happy and so sad at the same time. Oh, I mean, like, this boy's reached out to me from across the stage and just touched my soul 19. or something, man. 19. <laughs> the, the audience is listening with bated breath. And as you say these words, you can hear the muttering. What do you think that Morgo set up? She sounds like such a valiant knight. Oh, this is interesting. The intrigue. We must see what happens. Simon, 
Sit down. You can pee after the show. <laughs> you can tell if Simon's ninety or nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and you'll hear over like almost kind of like muffled. Oh, great! The propaganda is like oh, this is still on. <laughs> uh, uh, the uh, uh, brave Shomogo and her dear, dear Wigglewog, who Morgo very, very deeply loved. As a friend. Brave <laughs> <laughs> Sir Morgo, run forth and on her way. She was not afraid to die. Oh, brave Sir Morgo. Uh, they continued on after saving a princess. What better knightly quest to follow up than saving the most innocent creature of all, the child? And you'll uh, you'll see that there uh, that the lights will dim, and it'll very clearly be a night scene. As uh, there will be uh, the sounds of crickets and uh, and uh, cicadas and all sorts of uh, nightly creatures, which are literally just brought in by the stage hands of these like giant bugs. I presume there's giant bugs in the swamp, sure. right? As uh, there will be. Uh, and then uh, there will be strange, uh, like a strange glow that is uh, held up by the frogs as they hold uh, lightning bugs uh, or fireflies, uh, if you're not from the mid-Atlantic. Um, as it, it has a, a night swamp scene as they uh, will wheel out uh, what looks like a very poorly painted uh, well, um, very similar to what the Feywell party had experienced as um, the four of us will uh, walk out in just black turtlenecks and pants and just a bright, uh, glowy, uh, circular um, uh, mask that our heads are through. Sir Morgo, surely we shouldn't continue through at night. I'm s s s scared. <laughs> you can do this, Twig. It's not scary. They're all naked. Their winters are out. It's okay. You can do this. And the Twig yeah. will walk out onto the stage. She looks between each of you. Do I do the song now? Quick, do I do the song yet? Yeah, 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 this, Twigsy. <clears throat> Thanks, kid. As we did drown in the well of fay, suffering in that sad, sad way, and who shall set our children free? Good night, show us the way. Oh, with speeds we all drowned. Did we drown? Yes, we drowned. Yeah, we drowned. Oh, with speeds we <laughs> all drowned. Drowned in the well of fay. Oh, Ooh. the agony. Oh, we were drowned. Oh, drowned oh, with speeds. Oh, Seriously. we're children. Children oh. drowned. We're children and we drown in the well. Oh, this is so sad and I'm a, tragic. I'm a depressing kid. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. Sir Morgo. Oh. Do we die now? No, we, we already oh, we already died. Really died. We were drowned in the well of fate. You sang a whole song number about it. <laughs> yeah, oh. Oh, if only uh, our souls uh, could be freed, uh, and we don't get eaten by a giant oh spider. Oh my God, it's a good night to save us. I've seen you defend us against uh, 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 terrible snakes uh, uh, with your great strength, but there's no escaping these scary, scary, scary ghosts. Boo! Sir Morgo, whatever will you do? Boo! <laughs> Sir Morgo! Boo! Uh, please, please help us. Could you please perhaps do a stylish jig and that will be so adorable and cute that our souls will be freed because you are the most beautiful, talented, Charming little girl in the whole world, and is very more is a lot cuter and more well behaved than every one else's child in the world. <laughs> I think that would work. Yeah. What do you think, ghostly friends? Yeah, that's I what think I think that would too. Do it. I yep. can be convinced. Yeah. I have my own thoughts and feelings, and they're not things I'm reading off of a script right now. It's how I feel. Oh Me. yes, we have agency. Well, I'll wisp. I am Will Wisp dead. And scene. And, and scene. <laughs> and who's you? Oh, 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 oh
and I'll, I'll reach in and I'll grab uh, uh, the glove out of Torbeck's back pocket. <gasps> <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll sorry, I'll, it's moist. <laughs> and I'll slide it very subtly onto onto Hootsie's paw, and uh, you'll hear dun 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 dun, and suddenly uh, Hootsie will stand up and w- like there's just a normal owl bear, but a strangely human <laughs> hand in a white glove. <laughs> Sir Margo, your dancing is as fierce as your fighting. I can't believe it. You are so graceful and. <laughs> <laughs> and she starts doing a very slick number, uh, dance number, and she slides around the whole stage, uh, uh, moon uh, moonwalking. And suddenly, there's a uh, a hat, and there she has a, a jacket and pants. Them out of nowhere, her costume has changed. <laughs> It's the magic of the theater. How do you do that thing with the leg kick? That's really cool. And with this happiness of the dancing, the will o' wisps feel joy. <gasps> a oh. stylish jig is shepherding my will o' the wisp form onto a peaceful hereafter. Wow. Oh, that was the most stylish dancing, and you could really never do any wrong, Sir Morgo. You, your wonderful selfless act of dance has shown that the power of the arts, which should be supported in your local community, uh, <laughs> uh, has set all of us free. Goodbye. Uh, Thank you for saving us. Come on, you. come on, Fred I'm children. Nice to pray. Come on. Yeah, at Thank least you. temporarily. Come on. Yeah, so Thank you. you. And we're all just awkwardly shuffling <laughs> off the stage. Uh, uh, thanks. Thanks. How did I do? Did I do it? Oh, did you, I do okay? You did, oh, you did great. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Twig my passes out. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. She hyperventilates and passes out. I read the rest out. of the script to see if her parts are... Oh, I think she's fine. I just let it sleep. Ah, she can rest. She can rest from here on out. Sir Margo, were your, will your talents ever stop emerging? You are so valuable to any community that would have you. Hoo-hoo! And she does the whole hat twirl and puts it on her head. And, and, then, and, then, and then Moon walks off stage. I must follow, for I am in love. And I credit. It. And it was tragically... A moment that made <clears throat> Sir Wiggle walk even more in love with the brave Sir Morgo. However, that moment, she re- Morgo had realized how supportive Wiggle Wog was and meant and, and realized that he was the perfect best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> is this a tragedy or a comedy? <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, and however, love was on the mind as they continued onward. They have saved a princess. They had saved uh, children. But Morgo had not conquered the realm of love. No, not love with Wigglewog. That was not meant to be. She loves Wigglewog from a certain point of view. Like a little brother. Oh, fuck. Big oof. He comes over to the sweaty to Wigglewog. Wigglewog is Stop, stop, he's already dead. Literally. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the Bravely. vegetation's growing out of yeah. the stairs up at the moon. <laughs> Bravely bold Sir Margo rode forth and on her way she was not afraid to die. Oh, brave Sir Margo. <laughs> and rather than the song, the songs of uh, depressing kids or the beautiful uh, bellowing of a bugbear princess, she heard the crying of a strange fire elemental or lava man, it wasn't very clear. (laughs) As she hears the sniffling cries of bemoaning uh, unrequited love, and as they approach, (laughs) as they approach, Wigglewog could sense that this person might also be friend-zoned, but he wasn't (laughs) sure. He was probably doing a lot of projecting based on his own situation. (laughs) (laughs) 
as as there is uh, as the the, sea, the stage shifts, as there is a a large uh, cauldron in place of where uh, the, the stage hands have taken a big uh, a driftwood cauldron and put it in front of where the well was, and it very clearly it looks like the inside of um, of a witch's hut. Uh, I I step out onto the <laughs> stage and I'm I'm in uh, what looks like still the black leotard and they have just like uh, glued uh, rocks and big cardboard cuts out, cutouts that look like uh, flame painted in like orange and yellow uh, and I have giant like flame eyebrows that that come off on the side and I take center stage. <clears throat> Where we fucking go. <laughs> so <clears throat> no one told me life was gonna be this way. <laughs> my flame's a joke, no smoke, my love life's a deal way. It's like I'm stuck beneath a witch's brew. <laughs> I shrink behind the call oh, Good job, good job, yeah. When Ragnar Rachel's not in my life, there is no red, everything's blue. <laughs> I am here for you. In the town called Downfall. Thanks, Tweezy. <laughs> I am here for you. I just wish you would call. I am here for you. I wish you were here with me, too. <laughs> well done. And yes, it was the fabled f- uh, Cauldron Ember Elemental, Ragnar Ross, Heartbroken, and Lovestruck. Very similar to... <laughs> brave <laughs> wiggle walk <laughs> and Hootsie will just walk up and just sit in front of Gideon <laughs> Sir Morgo no the, uh, the I <laughs> you are clearly a match made in heaven <laughs> I don't have any feelings about it one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> Little did we go on now that this was all just his insecurities. <laughs> As <laughs> Ragnar Ross was not interested in brave, brave Sir Morgo. Oh, as God. attractive and beautiful and friendly and heroic and chivalric as she was. Wow, you're smart and beautiful and wise and strong and dexterous and very charismatic. But I can see that you don't mean that I should fall in love with you. No. There's another. There's another. Oh, is, is this... Rico, is this where I come on? Oh, I guess. It's just all just... It just says fire, question mark. <laughs> Uh, I mean, based on, I guess I'll just do it. Yes, we cut scenes, scene transition, because it's very avante garde <laughs> filmmaking. Scene transitions across the swamp in probably a very cool volcano lair. And you see, like, absolutely state-of-the-art, incredible volcano lair set that's rolled out. All of the budget was blown on this. <laughs> That's not at all what would happen. It's very clear that Grico got the idea that it'd be cool to have a volcano lighter. Oh, God. When are we, we going to have time for the well? Get to the fucking volcano! <laughs> yes, is that little, although Ragnar Ross did pawn for Ragnar Rachel, little did he know his feelings were not as unreturned as he thought, unlike Wiggle. <laughs> Jesus, so sad. As it cuts to uh, a soul figure in the uh, in this really state of the art volcano layer stage. Uh, so Kremi will be sitting there, uh, and instead of having like cheesy rocks and like cardboard flames, 
Crummy has found yet again another silicone buzz. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a tight red cocktail dress with heels and a bright red wig. Uh, and the only thing that would uh, denote that this would be a fire elemental is his bright, fiery red lipstick. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he holds a picture of Gideon, like framed. <laughs> and just like on top of the glass, there's like lipstick, like fire on top of it. And you'll hear this music sting of just light piano. On my own, pretending he's beside me. I mean, Ragnarok (laughs) for you. My heart is burning. Without him, I hear his embers crackling. And when I lose my spark, I think of him. And he reignites me in the swamp. Everything's gross like <laughs> liver. <laughs> I can't remember anything with silver. <laughs> His fire's light enough to make me quiver <coughs> in the hag hut the hearth is full of raw stuff <laughs> <laughs> and all I want is him and me forever and forever <sighs> and I'll like I'm, I'm like oh. on this very high budget like expensive leather like <laughs> <sit-in>. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and all like collapse in, vol- in a volcano, right? And, yeah, and, yeah. And so there's like huge lava swell yeah, coming yeah. Up, yeah. crashing yeah. up and then swelling down. The the audience is in awe. They're gasping <laughs> and they're holding onto the edge of their seats with <clears> every <throat> with every burst of fake fire and lava. They feel the emotion in you, Ragnar Rachel, and they. They come along on this journey with you. You do not need to roll for this. They buy what you're selling, and the audience explodes in applause. There are tears <coughs> streaming down faces, and you hear, Do you think that Ragnar Ross and Ragnar Rachel will find each other again? Well, he's only on a break, so he should. <laughs> I would hope so. That she'll come to her senses. Well, to be fair, it wasn't communicated. And they start arguing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> As we cut back away from the really awesome volcano lair <laughs> that is definitely in hither, we return to our brave, brave hero who's in the midst of giving love advice to Ragnaros. And he's starting to feel a little bit better about it. He's not quite sure if he'll do anything about it. But anyway, on with the scene. (laughs) And who's just looking at you? Sir Morgo, your words of wisdom seem to be swaying Ragnaros in uh, his heart. You know not just what... Uh, uh, How to wield a sword, but also how to uh, wield your wisdom and sway uh, someone in this way. What you're saying is I should build a fire that is so large it reflects the love that's in my heart for Ragnar Rachel. Wow. Well, I'm going to do that. And it will smolder the likes of which nothing's ever seen before. You'll be able to feel the heat of my love from even the furthest and coolest, and by coolest I mean hottest volcano (laughs) layers that anyone could possibly be hanging out in. Go forth with Sir Morgo's wise words, and they will know you not just as Ragnaros, but also as the Moist Maker. Wow, what a great title. Thank you, Sir Morgo. Oh, 
Ragnaros is forever in your day. <laughs> Ragnaros, Rachel will be happy to have you, I'm sure, now that you have... Now that I make more stuff. Well, I don't think I can keep going. <laughs> no, now that you've spoken with Sir Margo, a valuable asset to any community. Yeah. <clears throat> Across the, right. the swamps of Hiver... After speaking so passionately about love and romance, Wiggleward cannot help but feel his own heart start to swell in affection for his dear comrade, mm. Sir Morgo. That's actually just cardiovascular. <laughs> <laughs> and as, as, they've, as they journeyed to, as they journeyed with Ragnar Ross, to the really cool volcano layer. Mm -hmm. Everybody's there now. <laughs> she said of how how much she wished she could find love one day like that, that Ragnaros felt for <clears throat> Ragnar Rachel. And if only she he had all of the qualities of Wigglewog, and she wishes she could meet someone like him, but not exactly him. <laughs> <laughs> Bravely bold to Margo, her forth and on her way. She was not afraid to die. <laughs> it's, really, it's really that meme of like, I wish I could meet a guy like this. Hey, not you. I'm literally yeah. the guy in the pic. <laughs> uh, and then the uh, it'll uh, it'll cut as we're like it's basically kind of a half stage of the of the witch's hut where uh, the lights go out. The witch's hut doesn't move. It'll go back to the half set of the. Uh, of the uh, volcano lair as uh, the three companions uh, meet uh, Ragnar Rachel as they're all on center stage together now. Oh, Ragnar Ross. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be at your well-paying professor of <laughs> paleontology job <laughs> that you somehow got at the age of 24? Well, I, I was over there, but then I came to find that I actually had no marketable abilities to conduct the role. And so, and, and, and beyond even that, I knew that there was something way more important than paleontology <laughs> and <laughs> teaching people about it. And what that more important thing was Ragnar Rachel was my burning desire for you. Oh, Ragnar Ross, I'm so glad that we finally come together after holding it above our fans' heads for 10 seasons and using our consummation of our love to gain some of the highest ratings seen in television history. I love you, Ragnaros. Oh, Ragnar Rachel. I love you too. <laughs> and I can finally see its importance thanks to brave Sir Morgo. Who's will give you a pat on the back. It's oh. a smash cut to, yeah. to Gricko reading his own script. Like, <laughs> 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 now, now let's kiss. Yeah, stage kiss, right? Oh, yeah, stage kiss. <laughs> 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 wow, I've never oh. been so in love. <laughs> me too. Me too. Gosh, I think that we just can't keep kissing like this because our <laughs> flaming passion will burn this. The whole world to the ground, <laughs> and uh, and and seen, <laughs> and as the two lovers embraced, how it, it was a victory. As all of the hearts in the room swelled, it was a short-lived happiness. As the sounds of shouting and jeering em uh, emerged from outside of the volcano layers, as we ran out of budget, so we have to use the same two sets. Mm. <laughs> As the dreaded, evil, villainous, awful, uh, uncharismatic, and kind of an all-around dick, Agden, the brigand prince of Prismere, attacked the volcano lair! As uh, Torbeck, Twigsy, and Gricko, <laughs> dressed in rabbit costumes, will be jumping around, 
will come out on stage and I'll be like, uh, Torbeck is now playing Agden Longscarf, <laughs> who is very much alive, well, and healthy. Uh, don't ask anything about it. Uh, ready? Yeah, I got you back. Yeah. When you're a hare, you're a hare all the way from your first cigarette to your last dying day. When you're a hare, if the fur hits the fan, you've got brothers around, you're a family man. You're never alone, you're never disconnected, <clears throat> you're home with your own. When company's expected, you're well protected, then you are set with a capital H, which you'll never forget till you're claimed by a witch. When you're a hare, you stay ahead. That was Tormek's other song. <laughs> that was really good, Thanks, Twig. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, good moves. Yeah. We heard that there was love going on here, and we hate love, and we're going to steal all your shit yeah. and be just generally very nasty yeah, but and beat you love. up. But then we're also going to get away and be perfectly alive and healthy. Yeah. Oh. We're terrorizing oh. the whole swamp, including the volcano layer. You know what? We hate stumps. We never want to go to a stump. And yeah. only a brave knight that could defeat us would ever send us to a stump. That's very unlikely, which is why I'm stating it right now in this moment. Right, yeah. boss? That's right. Yeah, and when we come to get your love, we're going to do it like this. And we're going to basically uh. circle in uh, the three, the uh, round everyone as we're snapping menacingly, and we're bouncing back and forth yeah. with an adorable uh, uh, idle animation, combat animation. There is nothing you can do. You won't be able to achieve your end. Shut up! She doesn't love you. Bra brave, <laughs> no, but she can defeat you because she's perfect in every way. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Brave Samorga, will you will you defend us and end the threatening snaps? Uh and with that <laughs> What? Is there did Mikey give you a script for this? Yeah, I have Oh my god. <laughs> uh, and so with that, uh Grico's gonna be like and uh, there'll be like big uh, band music, and it'll be like ba 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 ba. It'll be the, the, the Star Trek fight with Gorn, yeah, <laughs> Gorn music. And it's like really badly choreographed. We're doing twirls. As, we're doing twirls, <laughs> tumbles, <laughs> and who's just going around like giving everyone hugs <laughs> as she's standing up giving hugs. Oh, oh, I'm so. We are not slain. We are very alive and well. That's right. Oh. oh I I know I'm starting to lie. Uh, uh, you'll regret it. Right, boss, we're gonna we're gonna tell on you, but to our secret boss, Scabafa. Even though we're sa we're saying that we're working for Bavlona, we are actually working for Scabafa. And she's tun, gonna tun. come for you. And we I guess we have to go to the stump, right, fellas? You gotta get That's... out of here. She's flawless in every way. That's right. <laughs> You're right, she is flawless and did the most stylish dig and gives the warmest, softest hugs ever. It's a shame you'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the warmth of yeah. her embrace yeah, is your line. Yeah, it's a shame I'll never know the warmth of her embrace. <laughs> it's fine. I, 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 I don't care. Uh, to the stump. It's clear that he's very obviously seething, but we are defeated. <laughs> to the stump. To the stump. To the stump. And we'll slip yeah. away as we snap. Well done, Sir Margo. You have once again <laughs> defeated evil and defended the land that has trusted you to, to do that to do that thing. <laughs> I just love you so much. <laughs> uh, I just hope I don't die in a terrible apple. <laughs> <laughs> And so, <laughs> after showing this chivalry of standing up for love and standing up to bullies, remember, uh, 
Every single bully I've ever met couldn't keep his fucking mouth shut until he was fucking scared. <laughs> so stand up to your bullies and punch them in the face, kids. That's the moral of the story. The more you know. <laughs> uh, a couple of bully wags attached to harnesses from the ceiling uh, are like draped by you carrying the, the more you know sign. Yeah, exactly right. As this happens. And then, however, they continue to walk through the swamp. But a strange, gassy mist washes over them. Ooh. As, as uh, Wigglewog acknowledged just how perfect Sir Morgo was in every way. She had defeated the snakes and saved the princess. She had uh, set free the poor children what was tortured in a well. And she f stood up to love and stood, stood up for love and stood up to bullies. <laughs> There's no way she could be turned to the dark side. That's good. Just saying that. <laughs> Ninety musicians, and you just sing that. I really wanted to do this. The scary music sting. Uh, and oh, we return suddenly as they walk. The strange swamp gas uh, uh, covers them, and suddenly they are in a strange hag hut that is very much not the same as the one where they met Ragnaros in. It's very different. We just couldn't afford a budget for a new hack hut. <laughs> and we figured, why not just reuse the same one? As, as they enter the hut of Scabrafa. Oh. And <laughs> you'll hear the uh, panting as the, <laughs> it'll just be the exact same uh, uh, hut, except there's just uh, a fog machine that's just blowing <laughs> like green fog in. <laughs> Sir Morgo, I uh, <clears throat> was was scared in previous uh, adventures with you, but I know if I stay close by your side, then I'll be protected. Uh, what do we do next? You will never be protected as long as you're in my gaze. And Gricko will shuffle out <laughs> in uh, with like a humpback in a cloak with the like worst Halloween spirit Halloween witch witch outfit on with a big even though he has a large nose he has a bigger greener <laughs> nose with warts all over it and he has uh, he has fake teeth in that make him look uh, uh, nasty. Sir Morgo, you defeated my secret double agents of the the Heron Gun, and you've done some really heroic things, and that makes me mad. Because <laughs> I am very nasty, and I am Scabifer, so I could not possibly defeat you because as your friend zone manservant says, you are perfect in every way. So I only have the choice to seduce you to the dark side. Join me and we will rule the galaxy forever. <laughs> no, Sir Morgo. Yes, Sir Morgo. No, stop. You can't be seduced. You are too pure of heart. Hey, Gregor, am I in this scene? <laughs> No, no. Oh, sorry. No, you're not. You're not in this scene. No. <laughs> you're not. No. Uh, she will join my side. Stop talking, man servant. <laughs> he'll point, he'll uh, I'll point out, and then there'll be a, a stagehand that has like a green bolt on a on a on a, on a popsicle stick that then runs over to a <laughs> wiggle walk. No, not wiggle walk. Okay. Ah, he gets what he deserves, but now you must join me. And and now you will have a great soliloquy and we will have a duet. And, and I will then kind of call out, as Morgo faces her greatest challenge yet, the evil witch known as Scabafa, she begins to sing. And Gricko will scamper behind Hootsie and will like grab her arms like the keyboard cat <laughs> or something. <laughs> In sleep she sang to me. In dream she came. That hag what goes to me and speaks Mogo's name and do I dream again? 
and he's like just doing the wave back and forth between the scene. <laughs> it's not at all fitting. And, just, and she's just like this. <laughs> and now I find the gross, disgusting scab before he's here inside his heart. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> And then Grickle will run out as he uh, jumps back into his uh, hag form. Scheme now it runs with me, my green forget, my hateful brave Luna, grow stronger yet. And though you shrink from me, a noble knight, the great. Disgusting scab before is here. You will be mine. As he runs over <laughs> behind Hootsie. Those who have seen your face are puke and sneer. I am the sword you wish to wield. <laughs> It's now slay, my dear. You, you don't have a choice. Your will is mine. The gross, disgusting scab before has won. Your quest is mine. Ba, 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 ba. Oh. Bravo. The crowd absolutely erupts. <laughs> And just Hootsie will be like, and she'll be actually over at Frost's body on the ground, like nuzzling no, him, no, no, like no. genuinely concerned. No, 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 I'm pretending it's funny. I'm, I'm acting, I'm acting, I'm acting, I'm acting. <laughs> oh, very sweet. You dare defy me and say that you would never ever join Scabifer and that you find my actions of secretly working to infiltrate Hiver and and sabotage my sister's goals with the Herring Gone and the Darklings <laughs> and everything else and that it's all my fault and I, I'm at, at risk and you are actually saving the realm? <laughs> Impossible! Ah! <laughs> As I'm walking backwards out. <laughs> and no one has ever rejected me before. You rejected me harder than you rejected Wigglewall! <laughs> As Grico walks off stage. Uh, am I dead? I, for, I, I, for, I forgot my lines. Uh, and with that, uh, she <laughs> re revives Wigglewog. With she, she knows she looks down at Wigglewog and considers that perhaps. Her dear friend, what is slight, what is down on the ground from a magical spell, perhaps can only be revived with true love's kiss. But she thinks for a moment, and just to be sure, she'll try a healing potion first. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Morgo, <laughs> you are so smart, you have recovered me, I am restored. I, uh, without wasting any kisses, you were able to revive me. And she stands up on her hind legs and says, yes, and just does this. Yes, Sir Morgo, thank you for your sisterly affection. <laughs> And then Hootsie turns around and then continues to walk off. And with that, the brave, brave Sir Morgo did everything that she could to save the realm of Hiva. Until there was a whole bunch of stuff with a broom factory and like a fairy dragon. <laughs> and it was all Scabbifer's fault. Please trust me on it. I swear. The end. The curtain descends. And the audience erupts <laughs> in applause as you make your way behind the curtain and prepare yourself for taking your final bows. And as the curtains rise again, you all move forward in tandem. Uh, Torbecca <coughs> moves forward to take her bows. Uh, Mikey moves forward as the narrator. Uh, Ragna Ross and Ragna Rachel. Uh, Twig and the gang. And lastly, 
Wiggle Wog and Morgo mm -hmm. move forward to take their final bows, and the audience arises for a standing ovation. Bom, bom, um, bom, 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 bom. It's an orchestral version, like medley of all the songs, of all the melody. Bom, 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 bom. The audience is enthralled, um, and you hear chitter chatter. I can believe that Morgo's life. Did you hear all the things she's done? Fighting for love, saving children, Friend zoning her best friend, making sure that she was able to push back that awful heron god Brigin. Simon, I'm talking to you! Stand up! <laughs> and all of this is happening at, at this moment. And as they clap and they clap and you make your final bows, and then you hear the trumpet trumpeteers go, uh, they let out a loud boom as your attention is drawn to the boxes at the back. Box number two. You watch as the shut up as the light extinguishes before you can see whether there's even anybody in it. But the king's box is fully illuminated. As the king stands up and clears his throat. It is by royal decree that Morgo, Knight of Warts, is cleared of all charges. And that is where we'll end the session. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for writing the session. Nikki. I'm very yeah. proud of you. Thank you for yeah. staying late to finish the play. Oh, great work, gang. I'm exhausted. We did. We did. It. We did, it. We did, it. We did it. Yeah. We I was did exhausted it. at nine. <laughs> yeah. It's been a week. It's, it's been, been a week. week. We're not done. We're not done. What's next? I think we have an Avantress and Shill coming up next. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be a quick one. Yeah. But stick around. Uh, if you aren't gonna stick, well, what's Avantress and Shill, Andy? Avengers and Chill is where we talk about our favorite moments, we theorize, and most importantly, we answer all of your questions and comments. But before we do that, we have to thank people. You're right, we do have to thank people, because we got a bunch of... And I'm not going to forget this week. Uh, I'm going to eat some pizza. breakdancing frost over here. So, we got a lot of resubs and gifted subs. Uh, we got a few raids. I tried to thank people silently. Yeah, Crane Rights and Paladin Mags, thank, thank you, you so much. Paladin Mags gave us a twist of dread from one DM to another. Have fun, Nikki. Uh, so thank you so much for the raid. Thank you. Lots of resub. We got a thousand bits from uh, Pastel Viper Eyes. We've got uh, thank you. 500 bits from Subayer. Please let me know if I mispronounce your name. Uh, shut up and take my money. Got to give it up for everyone's performance, but most especially to Derek and Andy's angelic voices. All of you are perfect. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Leilu the Wear, cheer 500 bits. That's another twist. My weekly Woo! offerings to the gang. Can't wait to watch. Uh, catch the first half of this after it wraps. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody. Please be sure to check out our Patreon in the merch shop. We just did a giant second launch. It's, it's absolutely massive. We love all of you. We appreciate your support. You guys have all been absolutely fantastic. Uh, and stick around for Adventures and Joe. And if you're going to head out, uh, we did do a massive merch launch if you uh, weren't here at the beginning. Yeah. We went from 20 items on our merch shop to 209. So check it out, exclamation point merch. Uh, and we have a Patreon. <laughs> come hang out there, uh, and we'll be back on. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow oh. for our mm. Diamond Scarab to yeah. hire folks uh, with a Patreon stage Q and A in our Discord, and then we'll be back on Wednesday with more Once Upon a Witch Light. Uh, but in the meantime, oh, thank you Persephone and Red for the oh, hey. oh. Thank you so much.